Yo, what's good? What's good? Uh, what's good, Cyan? What's good, Tiger? What's good, Mo? What's good? By the way, on my part, everything been good. Everything been great. You know what I'm saying? Been locked in, been chilling, but most importantly, still continuously doing things that's gonna allow me to grow. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna allow us to all grow. So I've really been locked in. Yo, what's good, Flexi? What's good? Hey, Flexi, I, pe I peeped your um, what you call it? Join the Patreon. Appreciate it joining the Patreon. And by the way, even with the Patreon, let me drop that down in the chat right now before we even get started with the stream. Let me get to there. Let me find where I can find this. Let me give me one second. Let me let me find. Let me post this up in the in the Patreon right quick. Boom. I need to put this in the chat before we even get started. We about to be locked in today, by the way. We got a lot of gems, bro. I got to talk about this damn Warriors game. I got to talk about this Warriors game, bro. Oh, my gosh, bro. I got, do, I, I got a lot to say about this shit. Hold on. Oh, man. Any Warriors fan? If there's any Warriors fans in here, bro, this is it's a very it's been a very depressing for... Uh, how, how long has it been? Like 16 hours, bro? 16, 18 hours or so. Probably like 18 hours, bro. Very depressing. Very, very tough. Six, 18 hours, bro. Oh, wow. It should be tough. I got a lot to say when it comes down to that. But as you already see, I'm better than Clay Thompson. <laughs> hey, hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. I'm going to talk about Clay for a second. I ain't going to lie. Clay, Clay, I ain't going to lie. He washed. He washed like some, some goddamn dirty clothes. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes down to Clay, let me turn this down again. I, I'm, I, I may have to start cooking early. I gotta start. I start gotta start cooking early because we gotta also peep the Discord. But let me let me say it's about Clay, right? Let me say it's about Clay. He had a donut. We all know he had a donut. He was 0 for 10. But throughout the season, I think how bad he's played has been gassed up a little bit. Because I was looking at it, right? I was looking at his numbers. I was looking at his numbers. I was like, wait, he's averaging 18 points a game, and he's shooting 39 percent from three. It was, I think it's like 38 and a half. And if for Clay Thompson, that's a drop off. But typically, typically just for the average shooter, average shooter, it's like 39. That's not far off. But still, as a shooter, that is a quite a bit of a drop off. And he has had some terrible games at terrible times. And so I do have to hold him accountable and show y'all exactly why he got a donut. So I'm going to have a mix of Clay Thompson shit. I'm going to have a mix of Kaminga shit. And I'm gonna be, I'm gonna show y'all ultimately how Steve Kerr is holding Kaminga back, and how Kaminga is way better than even. I think a lot of I think we know. I think us know. But as their coaching staff, I don't think they know. I don't think they trust him. And I'm gonna also show you on Clay Thompson's part how his night just went left. It just went left, terribly left, like all the way left. And not three lefts. It was probably like two lefts, because you can't get that shit back right anymore. That shit is tough. They said I had a game play five minutes, had one shot attempt. I've been working my ass off, and coach don't see my effort in plays. Plays me about five minutes, and that fucks up, fucks with my confidence. Then I get passive for only minutes I get. Well, if you're working hard, the essentially how you get rewarded and what you do at the time that you have shouldn't be determined based upon what your coach thinks of you. All the confidence that you have and the the confidence that you play with should come from only within yourself. You should not need to seek any external validation in terms of what you're capable of doing. Which is why when you do get that five minutes, you need to make the best out of that goddamn five minutes. Right? You got to make the absolute max, the best possible thing you can out of that five minutes. And so, if you get on, get onto the floor for whatever time you get, and then now you're like, what would you, you say that happens? Have one shot attempt, 
And um, you said you've been working your ass off, then you probably just need, you need to do different things when you get on the floor. All because you're working hard doesn't mean you're working on things that will be applicable for a game. So you got to understand that and have that little bit of self-reflection and say, okay, when I'm in the game, what spots am I at on the floor, right? What possible opportunities could I have to be able to score? And so for me, from, from my perspective, when I was hooping, I was really just like, I always find myself in a catch and shoot situation. I always find myself with a handoff or a triple threat situation. And it was literally as simple as that because you will always run into that, especially being in high school. Right. Or being around that age, whatever you um, like club, whatever it might be. Right. And so I was just like, let me build my game around this. Right. Let me build the fundamentals, meaning being able to actually hit a catch and shoot shot and then add layers to that catch and shoot shot. And so that's where you got to have that self-reflection and do little things like running the floor. Right. Because I guarantee you, if you just ran the floor hard every single time for that entire five minute span, you will get one layup. You will get at least one layup. I promise you that. Right. I promise you that. If you ran the floor hard, hard as shit every single time, they miss a shot, you run hard. They made a shot, you run hard. You'll find yourself a layup. And if you don't get that layup, it's because they didn't pitch it ahead and now their your coach is talking to the player who didn't pass it. And it's only a matter of time before they fix that habit. So you got to do self-reflection when it comes down to that. You got to think, it's not the coach's fault I'm getting one shot. Why am I causing myself to only get one shot? It's little things, bro. It's little things. Um, is there... Is there a DM on Patreon? Because I leave comments on some videos. I don't know you've seen them. Yeah, there there is a DM, but I only resp- I respond to all like personal questions and all things related to that. Per- that's for the King James tier and going higher. So like, I, if I if you if I post a video and you drop a question that's not even unrelated to the video, that's the King James tier we're talking about. So at that point, it's like you're trying to get the PG tier, or your hat you get you you paying for the PG tier, but then asking to get the amenities of the King James tier. And that's not fair for the people who are at the King James tier. So um, when it comes down to questions about questions regarding the video, I'll respond to that. But if it's something completely different, then that's that's another tier in itself. So. But like I said, Mo, you got to do a little bit of self-reflection. Kaminga is by far the second best by far. Carl also kind of fucked up um, Wiseman by Barry playing him in his rookie season, even though he was second pick. I mean, Wiseman was a Wiseman hurt one. And then two, I don't even know, like, mentally, he had the capacity to learn Golden State system. Some players are like that, meaning that once you take them to this next level, there's a whole bunch of shit you got to make sure you know, right? And not just a bunch of shit you got to memorize, like, plays, but you got to know, like, the ins and outs and all these little reads and all that shit. Some players just don't have a mental capacity to be able to deal with these type of systems. And so for Wiseman, it's like he had all this talent, but did he have the ability to... He, did he have the mental capacity to be able to carry out this talent within this type of system? And even being gone from Golden State, I don't even know if he's really gotten, um, whatchamacallit, he, he's really stood out or anything like that. I have not heard shit about him. So I'll say that when it comes down to him. But also, I think Moody is somebody who was fucked up by Steve Kerr and that whole fucking shit they got going on there with their young guys, where you have all these experienced players, but now at this point in time, it's out with the old and with the new, bro. It's out with the old and with the new. And they got to get hip to that. They got to get hip to that. And this Chris Paul for Jordan Poole trade, diabolical. Shit was crazy. Insane. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's really looking at it. Like when you really think about what Golden State needed on a game like yesterday, Jordan Poole. I'm sorry. Like Chris Paul probably did a lot, a lot of stuff as a vet. Hey, Marcel, Marcel, appreciate that. Appreciate that stuff. Appreciate that stuff. But he probably just done a lot as a vet. But if you're talking like future and building something, Trade and pool really did hurt them. It really did. So I, I got to say when it comes down to that, I swear it's like uh, two weeks ago, you hit 15. Now you're nearly at 20. We about to hit 20 this week. We locked in. We got we locked in. We locked in, Kyle. We locked in. We locked in. I've been so inconsistent with my games. Got any pointers? Where have you been inconsistent in? What part of the game are you inconsistent? Uh, Cyan, you said the same. You talking about the same thing with Mo? Meaning like that inconsistent or like your opportunities, not being able to maximize your opportunities and getting little opportunities when you're on the floor because even though you're getting five minutes on the floor it's better than getting four it's better than getting three better than getting two then better than getting one better than getting none so are you going to see this as a glass half empty or a glass half full it depends on your own perspective when it comes down to it because if i had that five minutes to play and i was and i had that's all i had to be able to display my coach to show i work hard because you got to understand 
Y'all got to really understand this as a hooper. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Anything you got to take note of this, and anything you got to take note of this. The amount of time you spend in the gym by yourself going through drills and all of this skill work, that does not show how hard you work. What shows how hard you work is your ability to translate that work that you put in by yourself into the game, right? It's not, okay, my coach is going to see me in the gym one hour and a half, two times a day, getting all multiple workouts in a day, and he's automatically going to put me in the game. Because all that work won't matter if it's not going to translate to a game. You got to understand, is that work going to transfer over? Is it going to transfer over, right? And so if it's not transferring, if you're putting in all this work and it's not transferring, it's either you just need to put more time in, meaning you probably just got started, or you need to get more precise. You need to get more direct. You need to get smarter with how you work out. Because what's ultimately going to show how hard you work is the level that you play in a game. The level that you play when you go play in practice and you play five on five, when you're doing all that little stuff, that's what's going to show how hard you work because you'll see how bad you were and then you'll see the amount of improvements you made in areas that do matter, which is actually playing live basketball, not improving your percentages when you're doing rollout threes in your regular workouts. It's not that that's going to determine whether or not you're going to get time on the floor. It's how will you transfer that in a real live setting. So y'all got to understand that concept as well. Um, my main goal for uh, next season at Paul Quinn, uh, Quinn College is to become an NAI All-American. I work with uh, uh, Jalen Tyson straight, and I feel that work that I've been putting in applying the game is translating well. Hey, if it's translating well, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. You know what I'm saying? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. So you said, yeah, Paul Quinn, though, NAI. Where, where's Paul Quinn at? Where's Paul Quinn at? And I'll also say this, if it's working, find what more buttons you could push so that you could continuously get better. Meaning that I'm at this X rate of growth, right? You understand that I've been improving at this certain rate, but continuously reflect on your game and say, or reflect on your game, reflect on your habits, reflect on your routine and see how much better can I get? You know what I'm saying? What things can I get even sharper in? Right, so you may already have the training stuff down, the on-court stuff down. How about the off-court stuff? Meaning, what am I doing when I get in the weight room? Right, so boom, let me check my weight, my weight room routine, my lifting routine. What's that shit look like? And then after that, be like, okay, what's my diet look like? Right, what's my diet look like? And then be like, all right, what's my actual time I'm investing back into myself? Reflecting, meaning through things like film, playing in college, you gonna have your own film. How am I how am I watching back my own film? Am I understanding my own film? Seeing how I could get better, looking at all these different spots. You know what I'm saying? Like you gotta continuously find more and more gaps. And that amount of growth will now like multiply, continuously multiply. Cause now you're pushing all these other buttons that's gonna expedite your process. So it's in Dallas. Is it comp over there? They got like is it is it a solid like little conference over there? Because I know like some NAIs like really have comp, others don't. Bet brother, appreciate it. No problem, no problem, no problem. Golden State is D Rod and the vets at this point, bro. It's crazy, bro. I didn't think they should get rid of Curry, bro. But after that shit he did last night, it's you got to really question him. You got to question it. That's all I gotta say. You got to question it, bro. You got to really question it. About to hit twenty. Hey, we about to fuck around hit a hundred. <laughs> Y'all think a little too small minded. Think a little too small minded around here. I don't know why I have fear. Um, of taking a risk in game, it's it's habit. It's a it's a human habit to fear taking a risk because if it doesn't go right, then it's it's embarrassment almost, right? It'll you almost be embarrassed. You'll be humiliated. But that, that's just what comes with being great. You know what I'm saying? You gotta take that step of taking that risk so you could show yourself what you're not good at doing and you know what does work and what doesn't work. Right. For me, that's what allows me to bypass that fear of failure, of taking that risk. It's understanding that me exposing whatever I'm not good at is going to lead me to getting better because it's literally going to allow me to decipher. All right. Should I do this in this situation? Or should I not do this in this situation? Like it's going to allow me. It's going to show me what I should do and what I should not do. And as you continuously go about it, maybe you need to fall on your face 10, 15, 25 times when it comes down to actually seeing what I got to do. To in these certain situations, right? For you to really understand what you got to do. And so for other people, it may take two to three and be like, oh, I got to stop doing this and start doing that. It may take you 25 to 30 before you realize it. 
boom, you fix that one problem that's almost unlocked the entire game. So just understand that it comes with the game. It comes with life. Most importantly, it comes with life, that failure, that embarrassment, that risk taking. But it's a part of the process. And that's that's literally the only thing that this is the main thing that stops people from actually getting to where they want to go. It's the main thing. Uh, Red River Athletic Conference hella competitive. That's great to see because some I know so I know some NAIs ain't ain't like that. I know some is like they don't really got too they don't got comp like that. Well, does anyone know what I um? What does anyone anyone know? What should I do while my hamstring is hurt? I can't play basketball. For, I ain't gonna lie, hamstring being hurt is tough because that shit's a such a valuable muscle. It's like shit, and it's a, one of the larger muscle groups in the, in, the, in your legs. So. Um, depends on what you got. If you, you can't really run, you can't really move. I would say, I ain't gonna lie. I would say, really be careful of what you eat and how much you eat. Um, and literally speaking about just eating as a whole, bro. I went, I did a 24 hour fast this past weekend, 24 hours. I went from like 6 30 PM Saturday to 6 30 PM Sunday. I ain't eat nothing. I just drank water and I ain't gonna lie. I ended up realizing, bro, we don't, you don't need that much food. But if you want to be able to carry out a certain level of athletic performance, you do. Because I did feel the burden of doing that fast because I ended up now cutting about a pound of weight as a whole. So now instead of waking up usually 171, 172, I'm waking up about 170 flat. And I went to go hoop this morning. I was trying to like get my dunks. And I'm like, bro, I got no energy right now. Like I just felt depleted. I got through the first section where I was doing some skill work. And then I was like, all right, let me get some dunks in. I was going to record some shit for the Patreon on dunking. If any of y'all dunkers, by the way, I got some shit that's really a gem that's about to drop on the Patreon probably Friday or this weekend at least. I know I'm, I'm going to record it tomorrow. I'm going to see when I can get it posted, but I'm going to have a workout that's going to teach you how to apply in-game dunk mechanics, meaning the things that I did to fix my jumping mechanics, not just, all right, how what can I do with a lob, but what can I do when I have actual basketball in my hand? Right, I'm gonna show y'all one of the drills that I did. I do all the time that teaches me the mechanics part and is able to at the same time preserve my joint health as well. So I'm gonna drop down the Patreon super soon. Link at the, link at the top in the chat. So um, speaking about that, just make sure you watch what you eat and how much you eat. Moderate. That's the key. Uh, what's good, Mike? What's good? But let me see where else I at. Where should I watch to get better at reading my defender and help the help defense? Watch a player who is sim similar to you and watch a player that's it's like completely objective. Don't don't sit here and be like, oh, I think this player because I like I want to play like this player. I want to think I'm SJ. I think I'm Paul George. No, be legit. Like, be honest and look at all players. Right. Look at all players and see how they play. See their style. See your role on your team and the type of situations you're in. Then watch a player according to that. And don't just watch anybody and be like, oh, I think I'm SGA and be able and try to take five, six dribbles on a certain attack or a certain read and certain isolation situation. But you're playing in high school and you do a lot of motion offense. Y'all got to even understand that you play in high school, you play, you play the club, te club teams, or whatever, a lot of motion offense. So all that ISO shit you want to do, it's not going to fly. It's shit not going to work because the second that you catch it. You got to make the read on the floor. You got to make your go quick, whether it may be a spot up situation, you could attack that, shoot that, or you could have a, a couple seconds and then be able to scan the floor, see gaps, then attack those gaps. But if not, if you hold that ball too long and all these other things are going on, you too worried about your own attack, you're going to break the entire offense. You're going to kill the whole flow. You should only break a play, break the offense if there's an actual gap to go and attack. So you got to even understand that. There's a shit ton of motion offense in high school, and you can't be able to sit there and play ISO one-on-one -on -one all day. Did the first knee workout you posted, didn't realize how much uh, how much weaker my right leg is, um, even though I'm right-footed. That's the weird thing. My right leg is way stronger than my left. My right is way stronger than my left, but I'm a right. I don't know if you're lefty or not, but Clay just need to get in the gym and work on uh, <laughs> and work this offseason. He's good. Bro, the thing is, what really concerns me, though, I'm going to talk about this more in the breakdown, is that Clay... Like players like Clay, players like Draymond, someone like Rudy Gobert, um, who you just known been good at the same thing for so many years, you start to question them and say, what are you even doing in the offseason? Right? Or why are you not adding another layer to your game? Meaning Draymond and Rudy Gobert. Like these are two prime examples. Why have not why do you not have a floater? Why do you not have a floater? I would be in the gym like this all day.
all day. Every single type of pickup, every single way I'll pick the ball up. Maybe trailing behind for me. Got to pick it up from behind. Boom. Get into a float. Read the defense. This side. Boom. Pick it up. Float. I would be spamming floaters all offseason. Why? Because I'm a screen. I set screens and I short roll. And every single time Draymond get that shit in a short roll, they show and drop back every single time. So what does that show? They're trying to get back to Kaminga or Wiggins on that France cut. Right? They're trying to play that other player and not play Draymond because they know he don't want to score. He just want to throw a lob. But how about the times when they already go and take that away and now Draymond's in a little gray zone. It's like, uh, should I go up or should I pass this? Uh, I don't know what to do. Get a good-ass floater. All you got to do. Why have you not done it? No clue. Klay Thompson, you got into the league. You're already a sniper shooter. Could already shoot 40%. And you've been shooting 40% ever since. Why have you not learned how to move so you can unlock your handle and your ball control? Why not? I don't know. I don't know. That's not a question for me. It's just I just really question it. You know what I'm saying? It's I can't really want more for them than they want for themselves. But it's like, why are you not going into offseason adding another, adding in another layer? Because Steph Curry has clearly done that shit every single year. He's gotten it's it's it really is debatable to say he's the best step that we've seen thus far, because his level of maturity, physically he has not dropped off. Athletically he hasn't really dropped off. If anything, he's gotten better physically because he's gotten stronger. Shooting, his percentages, not dropped off. And if they have at all, because the people around him aren't as good. Clay, less gravity, Draymond, not as much like the role players, the people that you fit around him. But overall, Steph is still being Steph. You know what I'm saying? So that really makes me question that little shit. So I don't know. Because now, now is the time where it's like those layers now come in. Those, the, those layers are extremely vital. How about you do playoff predictions? Oh, I forgot. Uh, yeah, I could do some playoff predictions. I need to peep the Discord. I'm going to try to get through the Discord as much as I can. And then I'll do playoff predictions. Then we could do the breakdown. Um, Where was I at? I can't run in. Hamstring. Mm-hmm. I play like Le- prime LeBron for sure. <laughs> Ain't nobody in this shit play like prime LeBron, bro. <laughs> Yo, what's good, P? What's good? Uh, I like how you don't don't just explore dribbling the Patreon. You work on playing off the ball. That's it's because I'm gonna show. I'll probably in time I'll show some stuff like that. But in the Patreon this week, by the way, I, I'm gonna break down all the parts of Clay Thompson's 60 point game where he had 11 dribbles that y'all need to add into your game. And I have a workout built on that breakdown. This is some different shit. This is some different shit we're seeing transpire on the Patreon. I'm building workouts according to my breakdowns. So I'm not just gonna break down everything that's in there. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna show y'all all the commonalities, right? All the plays that are similar. Take all the things that y'all would need from their game, right? Because I always tell y'all, don't watch a player and pick up everything that they do. Only pick up on the things that you need. I'm taking all the things that you need out of the breakdown, right? Getting you 10 to 15 clips that you might need. Showing y'all these clips. Showing y'all the reads for these clips. Then bringing a workout. So then once y'all go do the workout, you still envision those same exact scenarios and know those reads so you know how to pick up on them when you go and play in the game. And now you're also getting reps on them. I'm really deciphering the whole thing. You know what I'm saying? So if y'all want to go get those workouts, top of the chat, go join the Discord expeditiously. Or not the Discord, but the Patreon expeditiously. Um... Let me see where I was. Play, play, boom. Yeah, I watched Prime Clay highlights. After. <laughs> and the difference in speed. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I, I seen that shit. I was thinking about it. I seen the 60-point game I was watching on Monday. I thought about that. I was like, yo, this shit got tough. Uh, is this about Clay or Kaminga? Both. Both. Mainly Kaminga. The title is about Kaminga. But I'm gonna show y'all why Clay is like just kind of dropped off. I'm gonna show y'all why Clay kind of dropped off. I heard watch Clay. It did. It, I ain't gonna lie. It did. I, can, I can't even imagine what's going through his head right now. They about to give him like $12 million, bro. They offered him 21. They was being nice. They offered him like 20. They about to give him motherfucking 11. 11.5. They want to see Clay get it. <laughs> shit got, bro, I'm not even a Warriors fan. And that shit low-key was hurting my soul. Not for Clay, but for what, what Steve Kerr did as a coach. Starting Clay and benching Kaminga. Fucking stupid. People say uh, Kaminga isn't smart. He does have room to improve, and I'm going to show that. I'm going to show that. But at the same time, it doesn't change the fact he's your second best player while not being smart. doesn't change the fact of that. He's still your second best player. He has the second most gravity on your team. Where Clay has some gravity, but it's like, uh, we're going to give him a hand. You know, he 
bullshit. You know what I'm saying? But Kaminga's gravity when he's when he's getting when he's setting screens, right? When he's slipping, when he's rolling, when he's cutting, might be even greater than that of Clay's at this point right now. Because other teams know Clay breaking, right? They know Clay breaking. They still gonna guard him honestly like a shooter, but they know he breaking. You know what I'm saying? So when he put that shit up, it's like. We don't got to worry about that too much. We just showed him a hand. We know he going to miss left, right, fucking back rim, front rim, everywhere. You know what I'm saying? Inconsistent misses, which shows an inconsistent jumper, which shows an inconsistent mind, right? Clay's already in his own head. He fucked himself up. But you got Kaminga coming off the bench, playing 27 minutes. He played three minutes over 50% of the game. That's that's crazy work, man. You got Clay with a donut who had about 32 minutes. You got Kaminga with 27. Crazy, crazy right there. Are you done with the 90s? I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Do I agree with the hoodie? It's tough to disagree, though. It's tough to disagree. It's tough to disagree. All I'm, I'm going to say about that. All I'm going to say about that. The hoodie is cap. Bro, every time I throw on this hoodie, y'all say this shit is cap. Jokic versus Lakers? <laughs> We're going to talk about that in a second. Hold on. Um, he has too much tunnel vision and making the right play. you talking about what you would call it, Kaminga? Bro, his his gravity, bro. You put him in the right spots, run the right actions, which they barely did last night. He's tough. Like, it's tough as shit to stop, bro. Got that money, Clay. <laughs> no, Clay's not getting... Clay will get that money not from Golden State. But he'll get that from somewhere else. He'll get it from somewhere else. Not Golden State. I'll tell you that. Van Vliet and Brooks, um, not like 34. Van Vliet got... Yeah, Van Vliet got 40 mil. <laughs> Torn ACL and Achilles. We, we also be forgetting about that. Torn ACL and Achilles. King, bro, that's a crazy name right there, Bungus. Bungus, that's making me debate whether or not you won the you won the uh, giveaway right there with that crazy ass name right there. Mavs, yeah, bro, y'all riding the Mavs wave, huh? Bro, y'all, do y'all remember no, the the OGs, right? P, um, I know P. I don't see if be pulling up. I don't know if Rail was still here back then, but I know most definitely P. Remember when the season started, right? We talking like October when I'm still when I was streaming. Right, probably around like, like, like what, 7K subs or some shit, 8K subs. But remember when I was streaming and y'all was like, bro, they not making the playoffs. You saw them miss the playoffs the year before. Y'all was like, they not making the playoffs. So what I say? what I tell y'all? They're going to be the sleeper. And y'all got to even think about this. Hold on, let me. Let me find a, a playoff prediction chart. Let me find a little playoff prediction bracket. Let me find one right quick. Prediction maker. Let me see if I could. Let me find one right quick. I'm going to make my picks. I'm going to make my picks. Playoff predictions. See if this one work. Give me one second. I'm about to start doing these picks. I'm about to start doing these picks. If I can find a goddamn website. This website looks stupid sketchy. I'm not going with that. Let's see if this shit work. All right, let's rock with this. Let's rock with this. Let's rock with this. I got all these ads on the screen, but fuck it. Hold on. Actually, this shit is low-key boo-boo. I don't want to use that shit. <laughs> I don't want to use that shit. This shit is low-key ass. Hold on, let me find let me find a little bracket predictor. Let me find a little predictor. Let me find a little predictor. All right, right here. Hold on. Bro, I don't want to create no username. Bro, what is going on? Huh? Bro, this just said plus 21. Bro, this shit is stupid. This shit is stupid, bro. NBA is fucking selling me. This shit is dumb. Bro, hold on. Let me find some shit. All these... I ain't got no links in the motherfucker. Ain't no website that really shown... I literally just Googled it, and I got to go through all these goddamn links. <laughs> Give me one second. Nope. I don't want to do that. That shit, boo. I was trying to use an NBA website. That shit said you got to be over 21, bro. You got to be over 21. Nope. Bro, why can I not? 
why why just why can I not find any any shit that's this is lets me pick make my predictions. All right, let me go finally god damn. Or no, I didn't. Cap. This shit cap. ESPN capped me. They cap. If anybody got a link, drop it in the chat. If anybody got a link, drop it in the chat. But I found one, but that should look ass. I can't even put the number of games I think a team will win. I can't even put the number of games in, man. I cannot even put the number of games in. Let me see if I could find. Hold on, let me see what y'all saying. Being a next fan, hold on. Trade Bridges, he's big garbage. I ain't gonna lie, Nets fan is, is is a difficult thing to do right now. It is a very difficult thing to do. This breakdown gonna hurt as a Dubs fan. <sighs> hey, bro, y'all might have to get get Steve Kerr gone. Y'all might have to get Steve Kerr put put Steve Kerr in the spliff, low key, low key, low key, low key, low key. I'm sorry, but. He he. They was doing all this shit where it was like, okay, we gonna really let Kaminga rock. We are gonna let him do a little bit in the off season or not in the regular season. But when the time comes to playoffs, we're like, yeah, we still don't trust you. Sound like goddamn future, goddamn Metro booming in this shit. <laughs> we don't trust you, bro. That's basically what they told him. We don't trust you. We do not trust you. Bro, why can't they let me use this prediction chart, bro? I've only found one good prediction chart. Hold on. Let me find one. Bro, there's like nothing. There's like nothing. It's just a whole bunch of news sites and shit. Like it's showing me Bleach Report. And all this other shit. Like, I'm just trying to find a, a, a quick little prediction. I just can't find one. This shit is just literally it, it, taking up time. This shit is literally taking up time. I found no links, bro. I found no links. This is going to work. This is going to work. Let me try to see if I can find one. Oh, God damn. I ain't going to lie. It might be GG's. It might be GG's. I'm just trying to find one. This shit taking way too long, bro. I may say, fuck it, just get to the Discord. Cause all this shit is showing me Fox.com, USA Today, fucking Reddit. I can't, I can't even do this. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can do this. Take that off. 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 Boom. X. I may just fuck around and just use this as it is right here. Fuck it. I'm just going to use this, bro. Taking up way too much time. Fuck it. But. So we right here with it. We right here with it. Today, Sixers, Heat. Let's actually think about this for a second. So, Seven's going to play New York. That means. Who wants to. They both low-key both want to play New York before they play Boston. So, they both going to be playing hard as shit. Type in NBA playoff picker, first option. NBA playoff picker. I mean, I did type that in. I've seen it before. But it looks like... It should look weird. This shit looks weird. Like I see the page you're talking about, but it looks it doesn't it's not like the playoff. Hold on. It don't show me the full joint. Yeah, I don't see I don't see the entire thing. It's like half a half a uh, goddamn half a prediction chart. I don't know why this shit look is looking like this. 
people what I'm saying uh you said you said something before scroll down I ain't I can't scroll down for nothing this is what it looks like this shit ass look this shit boo boo they show me week by week this is the first option this is the first option this is the first option I don't got nothing pick them website you talking about NBA bro it said I gotta be 21 this shit talking about something I gotta be 21 bro this shit dumb Let me see if I could like sign out or some shit and then try to do it. All right, I think I signed out and I think it should, be, should let me rock. All right, fuck it. We got it, 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 we got it. I signed out, I just had to sign out. But hold on, let me see right here. Let me go back right quick. All right, all right. Lock in, lock in, lock in, lock in, lock in. Lock in. Lock in. Thunder versus either. Oh, shit. Hold on. Zion's going to be out, so they're going to be playing the Kings. I got Thunder. I got Thunder in six. I got Thunder in six. No no Herder. No Malik Monk. Thunder in six. I ain't going to lie. Could we talk about this right quick? Everybody's gassing up the Mavericks. They're playing Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard's about to be healthy. We about to get a healthy Clippers team. This series is going seven. This series going seven. Now who's gonna win this seven? I don't know. It's gonna be tough. But ugh, this shit's about to be good as shit. This is about to be the best matchup, bro. I may say, uh, actually, I, I'm tripping. I was about to say I may fuck around only watch this on stream, but I don't, I don't think I could do that. This is about to be a good ass, the good ass series. Um, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I got Clippers, bro. Y'all saying they gonna make the finals? I got Clippers. I got Clippers winning the series. I got Clippers. I got Clippers. I might have Clippers in six. I got healthy. I got Clippers in six. I'm standing on it. I trust I trust in Kwai. I I trust in Kwai. Uh Mavs in seven, you finna make me trust in 35 year old Harden. I'm not trusting in Harden, I'm trusting in Kwai. Harden is option number three. He's option number three. Not not one or two, he's three. So all those years before, he was one or two. Now he's three. An upset happening? Nope. Kwai. Bro, Kwai, Kwai, Kwai. Kwai literally takes over series. Like series is he's taking over series is like <laughs> I don't think y'all even realize like when Kawhi is healthy, if he if they're healthy, got him in six. Let's keep going. Timberwolves, you better get packed the fuck up. Um, I'll be generous and give y'all six. Suns and six. I'll be generous because Ant probably gonna be out there. You know what I'm saying? Doing his thug thizzle, but this shit gonna be tough. But at the same time, I could see the Suns folding. I could see the Suns folding. And like Ant just be take that shit over. Does Luke and I take over either? Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi Leonard. Kawhi plays both sides of the ball. Both sides of the ball he's taking over. On defense and on offense. Luca, bucket, drill cone. Bucket, elephant. Bucket, like he ain't moving. You know what I'm saying? Kawhi takes over both sides. Kawhi takes over both sides. You smoking wolves and six. With the Carl Anthony Towns, who is not even in shape, who's not conditioned, it's gonna be tough. That's gonna be a tough one. I got Sun. I ain't gonna lie. Healthy. If the Suns healthy right now, I got Suns winning this in six. I ain't gonna lie. I got them winning this six. I ain't gonna lie. Cause they gonna. You know what they gonna do? KD. KD gonna be that motherfucker having a having a field day. He gonna get his switch with Cat. They gonna play small ball. He gonna be our gang guard by Cat. Gang guard by Rudy. Oh, he about to start cooking. Oh, he gonna. Oh my gosh, he gonna start cooking. So one of the one of the three headed snake, one of the heads of the three headed snake, is gonna have Rudy or Cat on him, and that's barbecue. We got McDaniel's. Last time I checked, Katie don't see a hand. <laughs> Last time I checked, Katie don't see a hand. And I know Ant plays two way, but then now that 
where does that now going to leave you with both your wings guarding two of those players? You're going to leave Bradley Beal with Mike Conley? That's where I tell Bradley Beal, go give me 30. That's a, that's a size mismatch. I mean, he could guard, but 6'2 versus 6'5 with a... And you can't double? Come on, man. It's a, it's a, it's a different thing. It's a different thing. They got, they got options. It just depends off if they actually go and attack it like that. Nuggets, Lakers... I'll be generous and give the Lakers a give them one. I'll give them one. But at the same time, I feel like the Lakers are going to put up more of a formidable matchup than last year, which is why I give them five. Give them five right there. Damn, we haven't even seen these games turn out. Sixers versus Heat tonight. Shit, it's Heat in the playoffs now. I ain't going to lie. I feel like it might be some shit. It's going to be it's going to be 2023 part 2. Let's fuck it. Let's Oh, I'm AC not winning this. I'm, I'm tripping. But Sixers Celtics Gonna end up being the Sixers in about it's five games. I'll say they're gonna beat the Sixers in five. I think Sixers are gonna win tonight. I ain't gonna lie. Orlando versus Cleveland. This is gonna be very tough. Why was this gonna be very tough on our part? First year playoff team. We're going against a team who has a superstar or a star, let me put it like this, who has a lot of playoff experience in Donovan Mitchell. And I tell you, I don't I don't play biased. I'm not gonna sit here and play biased. We got Paulo, we got Franz. That's our scoring. That's all our scoring. After that, we got Jalen Suggs. Uh, he ain't score. Wendell, he ain't score. Fulton, he ain't score. Um, Cole Anthony, he'll do a little something. But we need a guard if we really want to compete in the East. We got Paulo already. We got Franz. And this year is going to be a learning experience. I ain't going to lie. Cleveland may have us in six. I ain't going to lie. Cleveland may have us in six. I'm going to keep it a B. I ain't going gonna, gonna to keep it a B. I'm a Magic fan. I tell y'all. But this just shows you how unbiased I am. Very, this is this is a one in a few creators is gonna keep shit unbiased. When even when it comes down to their favorite team, even now when I talk about these breakdowns, just understand the concept, bro. No biased. Aw, oh, shit. Shit. This is about to go seven. Giannis got a calf strain, so that means Dane versus Pacers. Whew. Uh, what state you from? I'm from Florida, Orlando. I'm from Orlando. I'm from Orlando, but hold on. Bucks Pacers. This shit might go seven. But I think Dame gonna carry him. I think Dame gonna carry Bucks and seven. Bucks and seven. And now Heat versus Knicks. Brunson has been going off, but he don't got enough help. He don't got enough help, man. I got Heat versus Bucks right here. This is... <laughs> I got heat for the bucks. Hold on, hold on. This is this low key little speed run. I don't want to sit here thinking about it too much. I'm just gonna let shit shit fly. Uh, what well, game? He Giannis should not come back. He has a calf strain. On he has on the soleus. So any more damage, Achilles. So they just gotta be goddamn careful. Yeah, I gotta be careful like a motherfucker. Um, go with bucks. I beg, Tyrese Island, my dude. <laughs> Bro, it doesn't matter what I put. It doesn't matter what's going to actually happen in fucking real life. Um, how, how far are we? We've 40 minutes in. Damn, I don't know if I'll be able to peep Discord. Thunder Clippers. Come on, man. This this is gonna be Kate. It's gonna be it's gonna be light work, bro. It's it's gonna be a different story right here. <laughs> it's gonna be Clippers Western Conference Finals. Nugget Suns. I think they go out to go double back with this right here. Nuggets and six. I ain't gonna think too much about it. I'm just gonna let this shit flow. Celtics Cavs. Oh, they get. Mm, Five games and Donovan Mitchell's leaving. Bucks Sixers. Oh my gosh! I ain't, or Bucks Heat. Let me put it like that. Bro, the Heat might make it back to the Western Conference Finals. Giannis, uh, they may bring Giannis. Doc Rivers can't outcoach Spo. Fuck it, Bucks and six. Bucks or Heat and six. <laughs> There's no way, bro. If we see this shit again, hold on, hold on. Celtics sweeping Cavs, I put five. You know, I was being generous. The Celtics probably get caught slipping. There's going to be a game where the three is not on their side, and that's where they're going to lose. But, dog, we're going to see this shit again. We're going to see this shit again, bro. Oh, my gosh, bro. This is, this will be hilarious. I actually hope this don't happen. I don't think Doc's going to be able to outcoach Spo. I don't think it's going to be able to happen. I don't think so. I think the Heat addition of Terry Rozier is a big time addition because you're getting scoring out of a guard. If they're healthy. It's gonna be a rough. It's gonna be a rough round. It's gonna be a rough round, man. He and Sixers te teaming up. That's what it looks like. <laughs> nah, bro. 
as a Boston fan, I'm tired of the Heat. This is very difficult. Let me go. Let me go to the Western Conference. Now, assuming all teams are healthy. Assuming all teams are healthy. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. Because the Clippers got Kwa. And Jokic is a motherfucker. PG. I think that I ain't going to lie. I think the series is going to lie in PG's hands. It's going to lie in P, like within PG. What is P, how, how well is PG going to play in this matchup? Like Whether, whether they win the series or not is going to be determined by Paul George. How well is he going to play? And, and he's going to be guarded by KCP. Um, leaving Harden, probably Jamal Murray, Jokic with fucking Zubac. Jesus Christ, that's a mistake. Oh, shit. I may have to go Denver. Nuggets in three and a half. Nuggets, at the, I ain't gonna lie. I'll have to go Nuggets and six. I'll go Nuggets and six. This shit is about to, oh my gosh. But I think this year, I think this year, as a Celtics fan, I think they got it. I think Celtics got it. I think Celtics got it. Celtics spin the block in six. Bro, it's not about what you want to happen. It's about what's going to happen. And now, if there's something that just transpires, injury or suspension or some shit like that, crazy shit happen, might not happen. But this is how it is. It's how it is. Um, oh shit. I had the same prediction, bro. Do you have the same prediction now, too? Boston versus Denver? Do you have this same prediction here? I guess hmm, Celtics. At this, I know who's going to win. It just boils down to a matter of games. How many games is it going to take for them to win? How many games? That's the question. Ah, oh, shit. I had to do it. How to do it? How to do it? How to do it? Uh, season four averages seventy. Shut, Bungus, you're smoking crack. You're smoking crack, Bungus. I didn't know you do. You did crack, man. Maybe you do need that basketball a little more than I thought. Um. Let me see. Let me see, bro. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I feel. Like, I honestly though, like all playoffs, there's gonna be some shit that happens we just could not predict. And where, where that happens, with who that happens, I don't know. And so this prediction is going straight off if teams are healthy, which is probably going to be highly unlikely, and all teams are, you know what I'm saying, all matchups are as we've seen it. But I just, it's just it is what it is. <laughs> D. Wade averaged 30. In, <laughs> yo, that shit will be hilarious, bro. D. Wade averaged 30, and they get a game seven. That shit will be crazy. That shit would be crazy. But yeah, that's what I got right here. That's what I got right here. By the way, I had a six I had the heat down here. Um or who who did I have down here? This is a seven seed? Wait, seven seed. I have Heat seven. Then I had Sixers. Yeah, I had that. I had that right there. But yeah. Um Prediction that banging so fair enough. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. We're gonna see what happens though. This is my prediction. We're gonna see this right here. I don't know if this shit gonna transpire as I see fit, but we gonna see. We gonna see. Without <laughs> You're from Brooklyn, ain't you? This nigga from Brooklyn. That nigga love him some nets. <laughs> he from Brooklyn, ain't you? He from Brooklyn, bro. Buddy out here from Brooklyn. Talking about without without the without the goddamn nets, this shit ain't gonna be <laughs> ain't gonna be entertaining. Wild it fuck. Wild as fuck for that. <laughs> um, let's see, let's see, let's see. I'll, should I even pee the Discord? We about an hour in the stream. Fuck, I'm gonna think. I think I got time to pee the Discord. I got time. I think I got time today. I got time today. I got time today. I think I got some time today. I got some time today. Fuck it. Let's let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. 
Um, bros from Israel. <laughs> I'm an unbiased NBA fan. Yeah, good joke. Good joke. Where's everything at? All right, so boom. This is probably April 12th right here. Um, he said, how can I stop defenders when they drive in a fast break? I'm pretty sure I already answered this. Pretty sure I've already answered this before, which I already had it, had it click. Uh, had six points. Yeah. I've already talked about that. I don't know what Buddy was talking about right here, but whatever, wherever I answer that, boom. Someone said, what does the term drop mean? Drop coverage? Think about when Jokic usually plays a pick and roll against a guard who can't really score. Let me put it as simple as that. Drop coverage. Good workout plan. He said, 10 minutes ball handling. Pound form shot. 10 sets of three. Laps, underhand finishes, mid range, no drill, mid range, uh, off the drill, mid range. Uh, regular, uh, you already know what I'm going to say about this. Regular threes, uh, jab three, five, 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 five. Uh, Some work is better than no work, but work on everything is bad than work on one thing. Take that gem with you. Take that gem. That's a lot of work right there. There's too much shit going on. There's too much shit going on in that workout. You need to condense this shit and literally say, all right, if I'm going to work on. Finishing, I'm going to go 80% of the time working on finishing. Mid-range, do I even need the mid-range? I don't know. What type of, what's my game like? What's my play? What's my skills like? Right? Threes, what type of threes do I need? Step back threes, stupid. Um, cross three, stupid. Pound dribble dribble back three, stupid. So, it's a lot of a lot of pointless work in there. And I'm going to keep it a beam even with the workout. Bounce workout. One leg box jumps. Depth jumps. Tuck jumps. Plyo lunge. Squat jump hold, squat jumps and squat hold. I don't think I've done any of these for my vert, and I've got my vert up seven inch. I could get your vert up seven inches in about three months if I really gave you all my program. I I, don't, I think I might have done maybe some sort of plyo lunch, but that's the only thing. That's probably like the only thing. Depth jumps as well. Depth jumps as well. I'm tripping. I did some depth jumps. Depth jumps and drop jumps. Two di two slightly different things, but very similar. But yeah, I'll say if you want to get a better workout, link in the chat in the Patreon. I got workouts literally people, oh, did your first workout one time, my knee pain is gone. Multiple people, by the way. So I'm going to show y'all the testimonials. Y'all going to see. Three sets, don't people do like 50? I have no clue what the three sets means. I just assuming like he's going from three different spots. Hopefully that is what it means. Uh, what can I do? I get better, do to get better at getting low and shifting weight between my legs. That's the weight room work. That's getting stronger in the weight room. Getting strong in low end ranges. I got some workouts in the Discord, but any new updated workouts, they're all going to be in the Patreon. So, if you need any of that, send the Patreon. PG tier. Dropping workouts and skill workouts and breakdowns every week. Three videos per week. How can I play off the ball every time I'm on the court? I share the floor of two ball hogs, both for point guards. This is a sticky situation. This is a sticky situation. Meaning that, if you're playing with two players that are ball hogs, you just simply at that point got to think, okay, when do I even touch the ball, right? When do I even touch the ball? What do I what do I do whenever I do touch the ball? Because you do touch the ball at times. And what are you what are you doing at those points in time? And so you got to think about. I usually tend to get a handoff or something like that. And every time I get it off a handoff, I'm always looking to pass right off instead of looking at it, looking at the rim, looking at the floor, seeing how I could attack. Right, you get yourself in a situation where every single time you do catch, you're always thinking about the fact your teammates don't pass, and now once you get it, you can't even think about you going to attack. So you gotta understand that when it comes down to playing with ball hogs, but that's a that's a it's a tough thing, tough situation to be in. And ultimately, they'll ball hog less if they could trust you more. And but you gotta show you gotta build that trust by showing them what you can do. And that comes with your practice. That comes with like legit playing with them and showing them what you're capable of doing. So he said, find a new team. Um, you can't play it. Uh, so I'll play here my whole life. So I won't change this year. Like I said, you got to maximize the opportunities that you have. Simple as that. Like if I if I took a lot of y'all's approach when it comes down to improving and playing, like and getting better, and I was that stubborn, meaning that I have to score this one way, and instead of seeing it as I have this opportunity, this is when I get the ball. How can I score when I do tend to get the ball? I would not probably be exactly where I am doing what I do because that mindset is just is a, it's a low level mindset. It's an inferior mindset to where you you want things how you want it, but it's just not how it is. So you're playing into a false reality at that point. So 
Yeah, you got to just think about how I got how where I get the ball according to my team. So, understand that. And if there are better options, I say do explore. Don't hold yourself to it and like get stuck in that situation, but you know what I'm saying? I'll say just just look around look like way all way all options, but like I said, you got to see where you could what, what you could do. Try that but maybe um not the smartest. Try what like the approach and whatnot. You try talking about the approach, or are you talking about some other shit? I used to, oh they hit the wall to train. Oh no, y'all trolling, y'all trolling, y'all trolling. Two sets of do, dodging knee divers. <laughs> y'all is bugging. Y'all is bugging. Let's see what we got in here. Hopefully, ain't nothing crazy in here. April eleventh. Um, anybody got any advice for me? Pretty good. Pretty good. I have okay handles, pretty good shot. My athletic system's holding me back. I'm not I, I'm not like unathletic. I'm just last on my sprints. AAU, eighth grade, five foot seven. Bro, y'all y'all out here doing height predictions, bro. Y'all over here talking y'all listing your height projection, bro. <laughs> y'all listen your height projection. That means at five seven you will have to grow eight inches in the next probably eighth grade, thirteen. Eight inches in the next eight years. That's a wild thing to do because if you don't end up being 6'3", you're going to think everything is wrong. Everything is off. So, <laughs> you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, bro. Height, bro, height predictions is crazy, bro. Just just play basketball, bro. Just stop trying to rely on, oh, I'm going to be this tall and be that tall. Just hoop, bro. What is y'all doing? What can I do to become a beast this summer? <laughs> Project, projected 6'3". I don't know who the fuck projected you 6'3", but you just literally have to look at your parents and their siblings and they fucking, your, your lineage, my guy. And see and see. Okay, how tall can I be? That's all you gotta do, bro. You probably went to the doctor and said mm, you could be this tall for that. Bro, best height predictions is the craziest shit I've seen today. Um, hold on. Let me even go up higher. Let me. What the fuck is going on? What? What? I just realized a stupid question. Let me go through this. Um, I always tell y'all this. Focus on a single skill. Focus on a single skill. Five four projected six nine, bro. Y'all shit is you troll. You stupid, bro. Best for anything to try uh, to play pickup real game is not like pickup like a real game. And then he said, "Oh, he talking to the other people." I hold on. If you already at a level where you don't got a lot of shit figured out, why is it waste of time trying to help other people figure shit out? And you may not even know if the shit is already figured out. I just all I gotta say about it coming down to that. Hold on. Let's get back to this. I was like, wait, are you talking about? But he said, he said you want to, you don't want to be last in sprints no more. I can, all, all I can tell you is this, bro. A lot of y'all think think it too complex. Just play fucking basketball. When you get into the gym, work on one thing. That's the best thing I can tell you. Y'all always want to get better at everything. It just doesn't work like that because a team is supposed to be good at everything and not an individual player. Any player of all time, there's always something they weren't good at. There's always something. It just boiled down to that player's ability to get in tune with, with who they are as an individual, their oneness, right? Understanding what I'm good at, what's my unique skill, and then literally taking that shit as far as you could possibly fucking go, right? All y'all trying to get better at every single aspect, every, every single skill of basketball, all at the same time, but you just will for, forever be an average player. And so now you'll not really have any real... Um, purpose to be on a team because it's like we all have these other players who are greater at doing all these skills than you and we put them all together and now we're a really good team so a lot of y'all be trying to do too much be trying to do too much so whatever it is that you're naturally good at run with this shit being 13 i think you said i think you said 13 at some point eighth grade yeah eighth grade probably like 13 whatever you're naturally good at get good as shit at it and then you're gonna realize in time what type of shit you need to add to your game so let me say that I'm on the verge of who just came from a trial and saw how ahead of my competition. I think I already saw this. Any tips to deal with this? That's a question you got to have for yourself. If you want to keep playing, you can keep playing, but you understand you're going to have to partake in the journey that follows suit exactly with the model that's at the top of the screen. Discipline or grit. You choose. Just ask yourself that question. If you stop playing, will you regret this decision? And if you actually do continue to go, you got to understand you must be disciplined. Simple as that. You got to understand. Anyone got advice? But okay, yeah, I'm pretty sure I talked about this already. 
But boom, let me see what else we got. I don't know how much how much else there is, but mm. But boom, hold on. A lot of y'all asking what y'all could do to get faster. What can you do to get faster? The best way you could get faster, I'm going to keep it a B. The most simple way, the most simple. Y'all, anybody can do this. You don't need no equipment. Is that you sprint. You start doing sprints, certain distances, maybe 100 meters or so. You know what I'm saying? 100 meter sprints, maybe 200 meters or some shit like that. Time yourself every single time and continuously try to beat your time. And then as you go between all those times you do those workouts, go and actually get the Patreon, most importantly, because that's where the workouts that I have that follow exactly in suit to change your physiology, enhance your type 2 muscle fibers, so that now you have that fast twitch, and now you're literally getting faster physiologically. You have the capacity to go even faster every single time. So I would say simply do the, do the measurables, get the Patreon, and I guarantee you, you'll see results. It's a matter of time before somebody actually goes and partakes in the action and the process, and they're going to get the results, and it's going to be like, oh, shit, I've been trying to tell y'all the whole time. So y'all got to really lock in. Um, y'all did react. Uh, why did I just get an ad on your live? It's YouTube. YouTube does auto, auto. They have auto on that shit. They auto ads. Practice running. That's simple. If you want to jump higher, jump. If you want to shoot better, shoot. It's just how simple are you going to keep these these layers when you go go and work on it? How do you time a sprint on your own? Uh, honestly, you know what I'll do? I'll literally have my phone in my hand. I'll see when I start, and then as I like, as soon as my foot lands down on wherever I'm trying to start, stop. I hit stop, or yeah, I hit stop. Once I get to that point, I'll have my phone in my hand. So that's what I'll do, just because I don't really have someone literally sitting there at the line. And that shit like that Unless you got a teammate Or someone you're working out with Then you can just time each other You know Y'all can just time each other Asian people are the quickest Bro I don't know what y'all talking about with, with, But I don't know First step has nothing to do with race <laughs> First step has nothing to do with race man First step has nothing to do with race I don't know what y'all talking about Y'all wild the fuck Y'all wild the fuck I'm not engaging myself in those, in those endeavors Right there I can't engage myself in those endeavors. Anybody with a jump shot or anything in your film, I'm going to repeat that next stream because we got to get to a breakdown expeditiously. Name a white guy with a quick first step. Austin Reeves. Got him. Austin Reeves. Austin Reeves got a quick first step. JJ Barea. JJ Barea. Hey, for, uh, for, for Kundu Kampazo. That's how you say his name for Kundu Kampazo. Some shit like that. All right, let's lock in. Let me get this posted on the ground. Let me get this posted on the ground. Bro, I'd be leaving my phone turned on for an extended period of time. Extended period of time. Let me see this right here, though. I don't know how to say his name. I don't know how it's spelled. He ain't white. I just, I don't know how it's spelled. I said Fakundu. Or I don't know how to say that shit. <laughs> I just guessed. But let me post this on the gram right quick. Let me post this on the gram. Bro, we about to hit 100K on Instagram, by the way. We about to hit 100K on Instagram. We had 94.7. Uh, Jaime Jaquez. I haven't really watched him enough to see if he's that quick, but just, I ain't gonna lie. He probably not. I'm a, I ain't gonna lie, I'm gonna keep it keep it a beat. Like like you talking quick first step, like yo, he gon he gonna blow past you type shit. Hold on. Hold on, let me actually get a video of Clay right quick. Let me find Clay Thompson. Let me find Clay Thompson. Let me find a clay brick. Clay brick. Hold on. Let 
Oh, you get that. Boom. 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 Hey, hey, who's in the Discord? Who's in the Discord and has sent the person who was posting my videos on YouTube? Let me know if any of y'all peep that. Let me know if any of y'all peep that. Hold on, got that. Got that. Got that. Boom, boom. There we go, we locked in. Someone leaked the Patreon? No, um, whatchamacallit? And so, not someone leaked the Patreon, who was posting my, like, they were taking my videos on TikTok and posted on YouTube and not giving me credit for any of it. So, I had seen that shit. I don't know if y'all peeped it. I don't know who was in the Discord talking about it, but I know a few of y'all were there. Let me also let me drop this in the Discord because we about to get started. We about to lock in. I got some shit. I got a shit. Some shit I gotta talk about. Get that there. 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 Locked in. Stealing the gems is crazy, and not even giving me credit credit for it is the craziest part. Not even giving me credit for it is the crazy part, man. I was already about to get some water. I was already about to get some water, bro. I'm locked in. I always get some water right before we start this breakdown. But I'm but like I said though, we're gonna talk about Clay, we're gonna talk about Kaminga, and we're gonna talk about Steve Kirk. Cause I got some shit I gotta get off my chest when it comes down to this little situation. Even if you don't get money from the vids, you can see it as that, or you could understand the fact that somebody was literally trying to take my work and copy it without giving me credit. One, and essentially, could it bring exposure to my face? Yes, but no, not even to my name. He ain't even tagged me. He ain't do nothing. None of that. Not no tags, no ats. He literally covered up my username on the watermarks on the screen. So literally, just trying to get get subscribers and shit off my name, off my shit. So I was like, yo, I ain't fucking with that. Pack the put a put put him in a backpack. Put him in a backpack, man. That's all I gotta say. Doing all exactly, man. Exactly. Exactly. Let's talk about Clay though. I'll look, I was gonna also talk about Keegan Murray, but I there's just too much I gotta say about Golden State, and it would have been an extremely long breakdown if I did have to talk about Keegan Murray as well. So I had to keep this shit condensed and just talk about Golden State. So I may end up peeping the Kings in time though. And I'm gonna lie, the Kings probably about to make the playoffs because Zion, his hamstring, he's out for the playing game. Unless the fucking Pelicans pull that shit out, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't think it's gonna happen though. I don't think it's gonna happen. So Clay was 0 for 10. I, one thing I always look at when it comes down to a terrible performance is how the game gets started. The way this game got started is terrible. Zion is out. Yeah, he hurt his hamstring. He hurt his hamstring at the end of that Lakers game, and now he's missing that next playing game. I don't know if y'all peep, but he's already ruled out. He's already ruled out. So, the odd time I score 25 in another game, uh, like less than 10, so I get um, more consistent games. What you said. How do I get more consistent in games? Keep your mind on doing what's right and staying at that high level and not always being worried and concerned about what's going to What's what's happening and what's transpiring when it comes when it comes to uh, playing negative, right? Keep your mind on doing the shit that's right, doing making the right plays and shit. Stop always thinking about the bad games and all that shit before you go into the next game, because you'd be so worried about shit going wrong that you replicate exactly that. But if you go into it only thinking about shit going right and you playing at your highest level, you being in the flow that you have when you had twenty five, there ain't no problem. Yo, Zion low key been cooking, but let's let's get to it. We got seven minutes of clips. We got seven minutes of clips. Um going off going off too. Indeed. Uh what's good, McLean? 
Nah, I literally seen on the NBA website he's out. I see, I saw on the NBA website he was out for the playing game. So that, that's the most legit it could possibly get. And I look, he got some shit brewing on the low. <laughs> Yo, hey, I'm gonna talk about Steve Kerr now, bro. I'm gonna talk about Steve Kerr, not yet, but because Kaminga's not in the fucking game right now, which is absolutely berserk. Let's talk about Clay, right? So, Clay Thompson had a donut. He had zero points, zero attempts from the field. And so you got to understand the foundation of the game, right? His first go, his first attack came off going from the middle and getting a screen by Tr Jackson Davis, get into the mid-range and taking a step back, pull up mid-range shot. That is not Clay's game. That's a terrible, terrible foundation to lay to start for the game because they have so many other people could, that could do something better in this situation, meaning Steph. And Clay could be in a better position for himself to score, just playing off the ball. So, you just got to understand, simply by Clay starting the game and deciding to do something like this that's uncharacteristic, right? Having a ball screen in the middle of the floor, about a minute into the game, get into the mid-range, and that's how you're trying to start and build your rhythm, you're not already in that shit mentally. You got to start your game how at the basis of your own game. Meaning, let me get my pin downs. Let me find a cut. Let me get a leg. Let me run some split actions. I hardly remember them even running split actions for Clay. So, that's just the foundation for his game. Now, just see how the rest of the shit transpires. Even if that uh, was his game, that's not what that we shoot as a first shot. <laughs> Bad shot as well. Terrible shot at that. But hold on. I got a gem about Steph. This, this is going to like allow y'all to play off the ball magnificently right you got to understand i got to put this in point five so all y'all see this all all y'all need to see this um uh back shot hold on give me give me a second give me a second let me cook with this let me cook let me cook let me cook right so look watch steph right the way steph makes off ball reads is notice what he's going to do right here on this next step he's about to hop in the air and watch his head he turns so while his both his feet are off the ground, he's able to read Keegan Murray, see if he has enough room for a shot, and that's now going to determine his footwork. So what he now decides to do, plant that left, step forward with that right so he can get into this gap and get into the lane, and now ultimately, boom, I kick out to Wiggins in the corner. So while he was in there on that hop, he made that read while he came off that screen. Jim. Jim. Y'all got to see this again. One more time. Step right here. Hop in the air, turn, I see Keegan Murray, and literally in that little splits amount of seconds, he reads Keegan Murray, oh, I don't got my shot, he's already close, boom. Drop that left, step forward with that right, get into the paint, make a play. I'm trying to tell y'all. This is little things like that. You, you, it's it, A lot of people overcomplicate it and think, I got to think all this stuff all at the same time, but when you understand your own sense of the game, Meaning that when Steph just saw Keegan Murray at that distance, he was like, ah, I can't get this shot off. He's too close. Boom, drop that. He just went straight into that move. Right? It's just about being able to make the read in that, in that amount of time and also being in those situations oftentimes. So inspirational. Let's talk about Clay too. I got to talk about this with Clay. I talked about this a little bit earlier. So, but when you look at Clay Thompson through the years, right? Ask yourself this. Has Klay Thompson added anything new to his game? No. So now when you start a game and now you end up having this opportunity where you get run off the line, you could maybe take a dribble pull up in mid-range. Harrison Barnes closing out hard though, right? He'll probably get a hand and be uncomfortable. You can now do this. You can get here and get to a floater. But Klay Thompson has not even added a floater into his game. He's had the same exact package from his rookie season until now. And so now when the athleticism drops off, he just looks like he's dog water because he's just physically, he can't keep up. Torn ACL, torn Achilles. So now you're trying to get in situations like this, and that's not a bad pass. He missed that catch. But you could have had a two right there and then if you added that to your game, and now that's how you build your rhythm. Instead of taking shots like this right here, where you're getting ball screens and taking step backs and pull-ups from three, which is really not his forte. If he simply added layers, Clay would not be washed right now. And this is where you really, it really hurts because you spent all these years working on the same thing, but you added nothing. That's where it hurts. Same thing with Draymond too. A little bit with Draymond. 
uh, have Fox on Dre and switches. Uh, yeah, I got a, I had a clip. I, I may have taken it out. I may have taken out the clip where they had Fox on um, on Draymond and then Draymond tried to attack and that shit was just dog water. But regardless, it's not like you you could also run a split with Kaminga. You know what I'm saying? There's different ways you could run the action because the real gravity comes from the people at the top. You know what I'm saying? So they could switch it. Yeah, he had the great game plan, but ultimately, like you could have found ways to work and maneuver around that. You know what I'm saying? Force a switch and do all these other stuff prior to even get into a split. Uh, Trace is low-key open there for a pass from Clay too. I mean, it was, but you could have got a floater if you just added something to your game. You said, bro, 2022 Jason Tatum bag. Get the ball into the middle of the floor. Work inside out, Flaxy. Work inside out. Now Jackson Davis right quick. Notice this. Sometimes it really, it really, it really is funny. <laughs> it really, it really funny to sometimes because Jackson Davis ends up getting the ball in the middle, and now when he gets pinched in right here, I want you to pay attention to this weak side, right? I want you to really pay attention to this weak side because some of y'all hoopers don't even know what to do when you're told what to do. So look at Jackson Davis, right? When he ends up setting this screen, slipping to the middle, pinched in, and now you got to look to the weak side and make a read. Look at what Steph is telling him to do. Throw it to the corner. Draymond got Barnes. I got Keegan Murray. Throw it to the corner. What does he do? Premeditated pass. Premeditated plays. It's got to stop doing that. You can't try to catch. You can't try to get the ball and, and think of what you're already going to do before you do it. You got to see the opportunities in the present moment. You got to be patient. And now he ends up getting here. It's like, Little to things like that. That my bad at this point in time in a playing game. That shit go. That shit hurts. That shit hurts. Um, <laughs> Sabonis, bro. They just they got no fucking bigs. I, they got no fucking bigs. No bigs. Cherry, you ain't getting no Keegan Murray. D riding. Ain't no D riding, bro. I just speak facts. Everything's objective. Hold on, I got another gem. I got another gem. You said pass so smart, bro. Oh, I got another one with this. I don't know how I, bro. The way I be pulling knowledge from these games, bro. Come on, lock in, right? I want to. I want y'all to see how this play turns out, right? Look, I'm gonna put this play full speed. I'm gonna put this play full speed. So understand, right? So anytime Steph is gonna get a screen up here, he's gonna see some bonus. And now notice how this play turns out, right? Throw to Draymond. Draymond gets here. Turnover right there. So bonus gets a hand on that. They could have had an easy two if they just did this. Easy two. It would have been the easiest two ever. Oh, shit. What the fuck is that? But peep this. Because understanding the fact that when Steph gets this ball screen, Sabonis is going to jump and he's going to hard hedge this, right? All Steph needed to do right here was to bring Sabonis out even more, which means if Steph took one dribble from here, over to throw that ball to Draymond, Sabonis is going to follow him. He's going to follow. He's going to be a, almost a dummy in that situation. He's going to be a robot because that's what he's told to do and what he's going to do while Steph still has the ball in his hands. So if he takes one dribble over, that now puts Sabonis further over with Steph. And now you throw that to Draymond with Sabonis further away from Jackson Davis. And by the time the ball gets here, Sabonis is not going to be in line with Jackson Davis. He's not going to be in line with Jackson Davis. He's going to be all the way over here with Steph where he took that one dribble. And now that's going to open up this pass to the to the, the middle or a lob to Jackson Davis. And now he could actually get a bucket. So there are one dribble away from creating a disadvantage and being able, being able to make a play. One dribble. Literally one dribble. I ain't gonna lie. Wigs. <laughs> oh my gosh. And this is time, bro. It is time. Drag out the pick and roll. Stretch out the defense. Stretch out the defense. I don't know what the fuck happened to Wiggins, but rap. Shit, that's tough. Wow. Wiggins, 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 bro. I had some clips in here about Wiggins and how dog shit he was playing, but I didn't want to come here and like really bash Wiggins and be like, yo, this motherfucker fell off. I, don't, I ain't really about that, bro. I literally had clips. I was like, bro, I can't do this. I got to drop gems because this is about y'all getting better and y'all learning. Ain't drop 50 again because his teammates is boo boo. That's why he ain't drop 50. That's why he ain't drop 50. <laughs> He's like 28. Um, Murray and Ellis locked down 
Bro, you know Ellis is a two way player who got a, who got converted to a standard contract in February, bro. Y'all got opportunities. Y'all just don't be seeing them. He fell off crazy. Let's get back to this, bro. Hold on. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about this. <laughs> Look, the fact that Steve Kerr got his second best player coming off the bench in a playing game is absolutely diabolical. It is absolutely insane. They made this adjustment in midseason to have Clay come off the bench and say, all right, let's see if he can build his rhythm and not have so much pressure and let Kaminga do his thing a little more. Rest of the second half of the season, practically, right? But now you want to say, let's have Kaminga come off the bench in this playing game. You know what that tells me? You know what that tells Kaminga tells the team? Especially Kaminga as a player going forward. Even though you gave me this opportunity in the regular season, you still don't trust me. You still don't trust me. Despite the fact of anything that just transpired in the season, you still don't trust me. Future Metro booming on some shit. You got to understand, man. You got to understand. Kaminga is literally the second best player, second most gravity. So why would you have him come off the bench and play 27 minutes? 27 minutes, bro. Really? Crazy work right there. Crazy work. And you deserve to lose just by doing some dumb shit like that. And you got Wiggins doing all this crazy shit. So I'm about to show y'all Kaminga's skill as a whole, right? Understand, Kaminga really is like that, right? He's got crazy gravity. And so second offensive possession of him being in the game, guess what he gets into, right? First time. Gets into the paint, gets to the middle of the floor, boom, bucket. Understand the coverage, though. Understand the coverage. So you got to understand, even though Kaminga gets guarded with a gap like Draymond, the greatest difference is the fact that he is actually a rim threat. He's getting this gap because they don't want him to get to the rim. Draymond gets that gap because he got no offensive game. So when Kaminga now gets his first offensive touch and he gets into a mid-range jumper and knocks it down, we got to keep going to him. Because when Steph's not going, Wiggins doing all that sorry shit, Draymond not a score, Clay bricking, building a house, you know what I'm saying, building a retirement home, we got to go get that shit to Kaminga. And that should be your number two option and not your number three to four or five. Let's keep going, though. Let's keep going. Let's keep going. And now, I'm not going to sit here and act like Jonathan Kaminga is Michael Jordan. He still has room to improve. And I do see the things as to which Steve Kerr doesn't trust, which are plays like this. He got Keegan Murray. He attacks left. He makes his drive. He don't get those calls, you know what I'm saying? He, ain't got, he don't got the ability to get those superstar calls. But in, on Kaminga's part, how does he hold himself accountable so he can learn? And even from a coaching part, if I expose him to this more often prior to, I could have helped him be better and more prepared for these situations. Because you'll understand Kaminga, anytime he does go left towards his baseline, he has a bad habit of not being able to use his left, one, or just trying to go up and just use his right or not really having a, anything to go to and knowing how to read the floor. What's going to end up happening, he's just going to try to go and find his right hand. Even though they ain't touch ball, he gets hit. They don't call it. That was the first time. Second time. Left wing once again. He gets this screen right here by Wiggins. And now he's going to go and attack the same lane, right? He goes left. Defender going on, on this right side, right? He's going to find a way to try to get back to that right hand because he don't got that left. This is where Kaminga as a player with more exposure, with more experience, he could have realized this prior to and even with the right people around him. But he didn't really have that. And as a player, Kaminga's got to go into offseason and say, how could I get better? when I now begin to drive towards these baselines, right? How could I make better reads? What options could I have? That's just really what he has to do as a player so for himself to improve. I'm going to talk about both sides. I'm going to talk about both sides. Poor ass this year. Eh, he was ass this year, but if he stayed in Golden State, it's a completely different thing because coming off the bench, he could be sporadic. Like You see, you saw Poole start starting to play well towards like the last month of the season or so. Because he started playing with a little bit of pace. My favorite player got done dirty. He just can't lead his own team. You talking about pool? It is what it is. Should have kept pool with JK. I think so. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I think they should have. Bro, you always talking about these goddamn nets. Why? You? Bro, the nobody wants to play for Brooklyn, bro. Nobody wants to play for Brooklyn. You're the little. You're the little brother in New York. Your little brothers in New York with the New York teams, man. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Come on, man. And now Wiggins, bro. Wiggins, 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 Wiggins. Got that shit cooked. Got that shit ripped. But Pete, this though. Where Wiseman now, I could not tell you, bro. 
Buddy, Buddy could be in, I, I don't know if I can say this right now. Uh, hold on. But <laughs> Buddy could be anywhere. I'm not even sure. I think it might be Detroit. I don't know. But peak this with Wiggins, right? Let's really lock in. I really need to lock in again so flow with this. But anytime y'all do spin moves, one of the main reasons you may end up getting ripped like Wiggins does right there is how you protect the ball after the spin move. Notice, right? Because when Wiggins hits this spin, what ends up occurring now is notice where the ball ends up being. It's right there on his hip. He didn't spin and bring the ball in front of his body. So now De'Aaron Fox, there he just circled around, got the ball to where right it's up right on the side of that hip. Boom, steal, right? And I ain't gonna lie, Wiggins was playing buns, not just this game, but all season. I don't know what happened. That's a crazy fall off. Crazy fall off, man. And now watch it. Look, look. <laughs> watch this shit right here, right? Look. Hey, watch Pazinski, right? He about to do some shit y'all never thought he could do. Watch this right here, right? He got Alex on the switch. Boom. Gets into the step back. Shot over the top. That's a moon three. Drop. And like that, he's already got more points than Clay did that entire game. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, bro. Clay with a donut, bro. Crazy, gang. I'm sorry, bro. Donut is crazy. With that shot right there, he already surpassed Clay in the box score for his entire 32 minutes of play. You should have just had him come off the bench, gang. He was, you saw him doing a solid off the bench. You know what I'm saying? Had the 30 pieces off the bench. Just like that. You put him in the starting lineup. He got all of them butterflies. All of them shit started to pop up into his brain. I don't know what happened, man. I don't know what happened. Start pause, Trey Clay. Tough shot. <laughs> That's a tough shot. JaVale. <laughs> JaVale and Clay had the same amount of points. He leaving to Orlando. I honestly I would not want Clay because he's already he's old. We don't need no older shooters on our team. We have crazy money. But we need a, we need someone who's gonna fit in. You know what I'm saying? We need to get a guard who's gonna be able to fit in, be able to score, be able to shoot. And I don't know. We'll see. We'll see though, because I think they may actually put a crazy offer. He's the only guy who can shoot. Uh, we're going to see what happens. We got a smart front office. We're going to see what happens. 5.7 boards of blocking the steal and sits whole fourth. Crazy work. Crazy work. Whole fourth. I'm sorry, you may have to get rid of that whole staff, bro. Let me get some water, too. He did keep flexing all them rings, bro. He was flexing all those rings. That's just sad. DeJounte Murray to Golden State. He cannot save Golden State. Let's get back to Kaminga, though. Let's get back to Kaminga. Let's lock in, though, right? Let's lock in, right? We still got to hold Kaminga accountable for how he could get better as a player. And so in these post-up situations, if you're going to really want to be able to play with your back to the basket, that shot, that balance, unacceptable, and you can't put your hands like this and look at the ref. You got to hold yourself accountable and see what the fuck did I do wrong? Right, And so, if you're playing in these situations, if you're trying to get that turn over, you know what I'm saying, turn over that shoulder, get into a fade, the most important thing is getting through this contact. And once you get through this contact right here and spin off of it, that's now going to lead the feet. To be able to do what? Get your body squared. But now, it's hard to be able to do that when your entire chest, when your, both your feet are pointed towards the baseline and you want to shoot towards the rim. Which means now once you get into the air, already leaning back because you couldn't get through that contact, you're going to have to turn your entire frame while jumping backwards and off balance because that force already dislodged you, got you off balance. So, something you just got to work on, getting through with that contact. And it's Keegan Murray, even the player, I want to try to post up and shoot over it. You know what I'm saying? That's something else you got to consider. How am I going to attack this matchup? Chris Paul old as shit too. Chris Paul old as shit too. Hold on, I'm sorry. I gotta talk about Chris Paul right quick. I gotta talk about Chris Paul right quick. Hold on. Hey Lord, appreciate that. Appreciate that sub. Appreciate that sub. Look, I gotta talk about Chris Paul though. This is crazy. I ain't gonna lie. This is a little crazy right here. Davion Mitchell is a good defender though. Understand this though. You know Chris Paul getting old when he got somebody to do a whole 360 on the ball, but even when he get into his go move. Davion Mitchell hit a 360 and still got right back in front of the ball and took away the entire drive. Chris Paul done lost a few steps. His mind is still working, still clicking fast, but he did a whole 360 and got right back in front. <laughs> it's, it's getting tough nowadays in this league, man. 
A little that that step just not there. It's not quite there. And then Draymond breaks from the top of the key. Tough. It's tough, man. Now peep this with Clay. Peep this with Clay. That's another opportunity that could have been a better opportunity. So let me talk about D Fox first and foremost, right? So notice De'Aaron Fox guarding Clay, right? Notice. He ends up getting too caught on the ball, leaves all this room between him and Clay. Ends up having to chase through the screen and try to jump it ultimately. But he does find a way to end up getting some sort of hand in there to throw off Clay's focus, right? And so now Clay, as we know, he had a donut break. But now on Clay's part, you could have got an even better shot, right? And I believe if Clay was coming off the bench, his pace, as you've seen in the regular season, way better. So now in situations like this, he would be able to read the fact, oh, he's jumping this. He's not attached. Let me flare right here to this side because he's already jumping that middle. So now instead of being here and now De'Aaron Fox is able to get some sort of hand in the play, he would be all the way down here and be able to take a shot with no worry about a hand at all. And now just being able to recognize that boils down to pace. If he came off the bench, could have had that pace and be able to make those reads. Now we're still talking about Kaminga's good shit. Good shit Kaminga does. Notice this. This is a great play by Golden State because just understand the spacing. You got Draymond setting the screen for Chris Paul. You got everybody to that right side now, empty left corner. So now what ends up happening is that once Draymond sets the screen, Kaminga also right here at this left slot, when Draymond rolls, his tag is now Lyles. And Kaminga isn't going to be one of those players who are like, oh, they plugged in. Let me set the line and play in state games and shoot the shot that I know I'm not great at taking. I'm going to get this catch and I'm going to attack the pass. So now once they're stepping out, like Lyles is right here, once he's stepping out after making this tag, thinking I'm going to stay there, I'm already going down and I already ate up all this room. So I get down, pull in land, drop off the Draymond, bucket. Kaminga has gravity as well. And even though he can't shoot, he knows how to work around that. And he could have been able to do that same thing had you just played him 36 minutes, as you should, 38 minutes, 40 minutes, as they should have done. Been able to make those plays all night. I would have taken all those bad plays and then so that I could be able to get the good ones. I would have taken all those turnovers, all them maybe bad shots, anything, can't finish with his left, would have taken them all. So, but remember what I said earlier. Klay Thompson has not added no layers to his game, and this is included. This is a part of what he could have added. A handle, but also the movement part of it, right? Because Klay Thompson probably has all the ball control that you need to be able to be a good ball handler. But when it comes to situations where you got to get low, where you got to get through contact, where you just got to stay strong and be able to actually have that step, protect the ball, Keon Ellis just jumped that shit, ripped him. He ripped both Splash Brothers in this game, by the way. Both of them. Steph, I think twice, and then he ripped Clay. And now let's get right back to Clay, though, right? Davion Mitchell. Now you're thinking, all right, you just got the size advantage. You could be able to score this, but it's not like that, right? Because size could be trumped by a smart defender. Watch Davion Mitchell, right? Clay spin. Ah, shit, you like Clay gonna get this bucket. Clay gonna get this bucket. You gotta score this, Clay. You gotta get your rhythm off of this lab, Clay. But watch Davion Mitchell. What is he gonna do? Clay Thompson, he stops. Davion Mitchell, oh, he cancels his jump. What does he do? Pull the chair, practically. Another method of pulling the chair, right? Because instead of getting here and trying to get back to his body, Davion Mitchell continues just to drop back. Pull the chair, off balance, you fall on the floor, and you still are left with a donut. Still left with a donut. Overcame the size disadvantage, the height disadvantage. Play smart. Got him off balance. He defeated himself. Yeah, you don't let size limit him at all. Let's talk about Wiggins. Let's talk about Wiggins. Let's talk about Wiggins, right? I ain't gonna lie, Wiggins was playing buns. It's, 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 it's... I really wonder what's going on with Wiggins. Like, how do you go from 18 to, like, 11 per points per game in one season? Whatever transpired in that course of time where he was out and then came back and all that other shit, I don't know what happened, but just, we just have not seen, seen, seen the same Andrew Wiggins. We have not. So I want y'all to notice this play. I want y'all to notice this play because a lot of y'all hoopers remind me of Andrew Wiggins in this situation. So notice, right? A lot of times when y'all drive... Y'all do what Wiggins is about to do here. You end up jumping, getting stuck in the air, turnover, but you should have made your decision way earlier, right? Understand, 
let's go back right here because go back one more time go to 0.5 because notice right when Wiggins ends up making this drive he splits watch Keegan Murray right he jumps to that middle you don't have no lane to the rim no more pass that shit already you got two defenders already rotating you got no lane to the rim what Wiggins decides to do is what y'all tend to do which is now get here jump first and see if you can have some shit at the rim and then try to throw it at the last second but you should just keep it as simple as you possibly can and then end up getting in these situations as soon as you see this help defense step over kick that out to where you have the advantage and now you get a good looking shot instead of a turnover like you got right there you just got to make that pass out read the defense don't try to force up a layup pass that shit out Curry should leave and go to a team like the you fucking wild. I don't like um I don't like PG. I'm straight I'm straight I'm shooting straight mid-range jumpers even if it's broke. <laughs> Why do you keep talking about Macau Bridges, bro? You know who's looking like Prime Clay on the low? Goddamn Keegan Murray. Goddamn Keegan Murray. Now notice this with Kamiko. Hold on. Notice this, notice this, notice this. This is a gem. Notice this. So now, once you actually get Kaminga playing with Steph, you're two players with the most gravity. Re understand what happens, right? You got Steph as a screener, and he was actually able to get a switch, right? He was actually able to get Sabonis onto him. So understand, how was he even able to get that switch? Why did they make that switch? Because Curry, understanding that he's a shooter, he needs to set good screens, sets a fantastic screen on Sabonis. And now what happens is that if Ellis tries to stay attached to Steph while Sabonis is hit, what's gonna happen? Kaminga's gonna have a lane to the rim, he's attacking, and now we can't we can't give that up. So they're just going to willingly switch this because you have no other choice unless you want Kaminga to get it too. That's the gravity that he has, but was only able to do for 27 minutes out of 48. So now Steph is even able to actually go and attack a mismatch, right? And even though it did even result in a bucket, he was just able to get a switch and at least get something that's higher quality than then having to go through a blitz and having the ball being Draymond Green's hands in the corner to shoot a three where that's what the defense wants him to do. Trey Murphy, uh, Trey Murphy or Keegan Murray? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a good question. That's a good question. Low-key, I, I might have to rock. That's a good-ass question, P. I might have to rock with Trey. Keegan Murray is more versatile of a shooter, meaning that Trey Murphy is all is usually all spot up stuff. Like he's not coming off curls, coming off hand downs or pin downs and knocking shit down. Trey Murphy is just like in the same spot. Whereas Keegan Murray, he's coming up, coming off these curls. He's coming off these pin downs, all these flares. He has more versatility in his shot. And I'm pretty sure he is older though. You got to take that into account. I'm pretty sure Trey Murphy is younger than him by probably two to three years. So that's a tough one because Trey, uh, Trey Murphy can develop those skills in that amount of time if around the right people. So if you're asking me, I might have to go and snag Trey Murphy because also his athletic capacity, his athletic, his athleticism is also crazy off the charts. So I, there's more potential within him. And if you put a player like Trey Murphy in my, in my environment, sky's the limit, bro. Sky's the limit. Sky's the limit. Um, I'm already in the middle of the breakdown. I might have to pee the Discord, the rest of the Discord, like videos next stream. Keegan Murray was in college for like three years, if y'all ain't know. He was in college for like three, four years. So he came into the league, he was already fairly experienced and understood the game fairly to a good extent, more than his competition. But notice this on this inbounds, right? So notice this. Look, so peep, right? In a set like this, Steph sees this gap already. He understands that, oh, shit, we could get a layup right here. Clay said in this screen, opportunity is right there. You couldn't get it, though, right? Now you're like, whose fault is it? This is why it's so important, right? This is why it's extremely important. Remember, look, if you watch Mind the Game podcast, JJ and Braun talked about how timing on these plays are extremely important. So now watch Kaminga and Clay with the screen because Steph right here recognizes, oh, shit, we could get a layup. But now Kamiga, he's walking into the screen, right? He's just he's just dazing, he's just chilling, right? But if he sprinted and got to that spot, now at that point you could have got a layup. But that gave Sabonis time to be able to break up that play 
and now you don't get that layup. Because Harrison Barnes was staying attached to Clay. So, you could have had a layup. Could have had one. He's got to move quicker. How do you play calmly while attacking the rim? <laughs> unlike, unlike Wiggins in parentheses is crazy. Play calmly while attacking the rim. You just play at your the speed that you could process, the speed that you could control. That's all it is. Wiggins be attacking the rim at a speed he can't control, and or he just predetermines his goals and his attacks. How to be faster than grandma is absolutely crazy. <laughs> In advance, to tell you next stream. Yeah, I got you next stream because I had to. I did some playoff predictions and then I ended up taking up time. So. This is Onyx. I'm a, I told y'all, next stream, next stream, next stream, next stream. Now, notice this. I want to talk about, come on, Kaminga be cooking. Kaminga was cooking. So understand, right? Now, now watch how Kaminga's about to play this game in layers and how much gravity and how good he really is as a player if you let him rock, right? Notice, he gets this catch right here. Jab, <laughs> Sabonis damn near fell. That just shows you how, how much of a threat he is to go downhill and how scared they are of that, right? And now switch right here by Keon Ellis, but understand, right? You switched up on, on Jonathan Kaminga, you're cooked. Because now I could get by you, and if you break your base, pull-up game. Perfect for his game, perfect for his bag. Because he has rim, he's a rim threat, and if he could just stop that momentum, good luck, right? Good luck at that point. And now, next offensive possession down. Next possession down, he got some bonus, right? He's got the same gap. Now, how do you see this gap? Should I pull this from three and get baited into that shot? Or should I eat up this gap and get to something I'm comfortable doing? Notice, right? He hit you with a dribble pull-up last time, gets you moving backwards, hezzy pull-up, boom, over the top. If he gets that on lock, if he gets this on lock, because they're always going to move back with all these size-ups that go downhill. Pull-up shot, GG's. GG's. He's averaging easy 22-plus per game, at least. And that's, that's on a light note. That's on a light note. And now third possession, right? Back to back to back. Gets the ball off the glass. I see the floor for myself. I make the reads. And notice what happens when he decides to eat up this room with him and Sabonis in the mid-range. Watch Sabonis' movement. Watch. Being at this free throw line, understanding he hit two from this area already, notice Sabonis. He steps up because he hit him with a hezzy because he's hit two back to back. And now I can get the drive and get into a lane. Boom, float right there off one, bucket off the glass. He really had, he has the capacity. It's just that, are you going to let him display that? Are you going to let him play his game? And are you going to let him play through the mistakes? And understand that even though he may take a bad shot or two, he may turn the ball over every now and then, the pluses that he brings outweigh the minuses. And that's a fact. And trying to go to your veterans and more experienced players and say, oh, they, they're going to have, they're not going to have as many minuses. Are they going to have many pluses? Are they going to have many pluses? How about Clay? How many minuses did he have? And how many pluses did he have? They didn't have many pluses because anything that could have been a plus was a minus because he kept breaking. No gravity. Kept shooting. Got nothing out of him. So you put someone in like Kaminga who may turn the ball over, but that turnover, they go back to the other side. Transition. Same thing like a Clay break. Transition. That's all I got to say. Tough lay. Built his rhythm perfectly. You want to train with PG and Kawhi so badly? You know, the one person I want to train with is Kyrie. Clay is a bum. <laughs> Yo, you know what I told one of my homies today? <laughs> Bro, I told one of my homies. I said, I said, Steph, Steph needs to go, Steph needs to go to uh, Steve Kerr and tell, and tell Steve Kerr the same shit Kendrick told to J, uh, Drake and J. Cole. Fuck the big three, nigga. It's just big me, nigga. Bum. They all bums, bro. He's the only person over there who doing some shit. He need to go literally play that song to that to Steve Kerr and say, bro, Clay can't do shit. Don't play him 32. Draymond, he's going, he on a downfall. Play these young guys. It's just me. It's just me by myself. No, I, no one can compete. It's just big me, bro. It literally is just straight like that, bro. This is hilarious, bro. I'm like, bro, you need to tell him that same shit, bro. I'm really still like that, but these other niggas still ain't like that, bro. These other niggas still ain't like that. It is the, it's the truth behind it, bro. Steph sitting here, I want to win. Do everything it needs to win. I'm still like that. They, they is not. Straight up like that. Uh, Kendrick was just like Curry, so I understand. <laughs> they, <laughs> just funny, just funny, just funny. 
did funny. But now let's go back to Kaminga, bro. We've all had games like Clay had. It's become it's become too consistent for to say, oh damn, Clay just had one bad game. It's back to back years, close close out games, big time games. Clay is nowhere to be found. Nowhere to be found. So even understand this as well. Look, peep this. Kaminga has the most gravity behind Steph. And so understand these situations. When he gets the ball in the middle, it's like, oh shit, you gotta score this. This is a bucket. Easy. But now on Kaminga's part, how could Kaminga get better as a player? Like I said before, add in that goddamn left hand because now you switching hands with this and now you can't even lay that because you can't even control your body and you can't control that hand according to your body. You got to go work on that in the offseason. Now, if Kaminga does work on these skills, coming back a different player, higher level of a player if they get Steve Kerr going because they ain't letting, keep, they ain't letting him Kaminga rock, bro. That's crazy. Ain't letting my buddy rock. A lot of ways to learn. The other two don't fell off. <laughs> no cap. Draymond. The thing is, Draymond could still be solid though, because his game was never really built upon like athleticism or anything like that. He's setting screens. He's doing the defense callouts. If you put a stretch big next to Draymond, ain't no problem. We could keep Draymond. But Clay, it's like, come on, man. Come on, man. And even Pete, this with with, with Kamiga now. Kaminga does have a long way to go in terms of IQ and understanding when and where should I do certain things. He gets this catch right here, right now. Seven on the shot clock. And notice what he ends up doing now, right? Seven on the shot clock, lay into possession. He ends up dribbling. Mid-dribble, he looks up at the clock. Before you put the ball down, you got to look at the clock so you can understand how quick of a move must I make. But now he only is able to dribble. Looks at the clock. While Fox is now reaching, now he's throwing off his rhythm, gets in here, and isn't even able to read the defense and see where I must go and what I can do. So just understanding those little things will cha completely change his game. Basketball, he's just taking shots. He's taking shots that twenty like 2018 Clay would, would take. And honestly, it's like, I don't know what's going on mentally. I think a lot of shit is mental. I'm going to keep it a B. I'm going to keep it a stack. I'm gonna keep it a stack. I think a lot of this shit going on with, with with Clay is just a mental warfare, mental warfare, bro. And I think coming off the bench was the right thing to do, but then once again, they then I even have him come off the bench. So it's kind of wild, kind of wild. Only other team linked with Clay besides the Warriors are the Orlando Tragic. Jason, 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 Jason. You you're a Rockets fan, man. Come on, man. He started the season, he was like, You're, we're not making, oh, Magic's not making the playoffs. Oh, we're Rockets going to make the playoffs. We got, we got Dylan Brooks, Jane Green, Shane Goon. Y'all in Cancun. <laughs> you try to name all these players, bro. You was like, bro, we got Van Vliet. <laughs> we all was trying to be like, we got Van Vliet. We got Jalen Green. We got Jabari Smith. We got all these dudes. We got Shane Goon, but they all sitting in Cancun. Come on, bro. Come on, come on, man. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta lock in, bro. Just keep, just, just stop the hate. Just stop the hate. <laughs> right, you are Shangoon with Cancun is crazy. Okay, J Cole, you stupid, you stupid. Let's get back to this. Let's lock in. Let's lock in. The Chris Paul trade was terrible. That's all I gotta say when it come down to that. Just a head nod, bro. Head nod, head nod, head nod, head nod. But notice, notice, if you're not even gonna have Kaminga in the actions or in the game, which is you should have done, you could have just had him camp corner. And when Steph got this gravity, threw him to the middle, France cut every single time. Every time. Every time this shit, this shit going to work. Right? Even though he did get blocked on this one, follow that right back up. He's scoring those every time. Spam these actions. You just need the right slips, the right timing, right spacing, and that could all be controlled by the team. And you got Kaminga in these situations. Come on, man. Kaminga's scoring that shit every time. This is absolutely crazy work. This is absolutely crazy work right here. Fifth seed, exactly. You hated on ho ho. Who hated on Jalen Green? Who hated on Jalen Green? Who hated on Jalen Green? Don't t don't say it was me who hated on Jalen Green. If y'all seen what transpired after I dropped my first Jalen Green video, that's when he took off. I don't know if I had any parts, but all I can say is once I dropped that video, he started averaging about twenty six points a game. And all y'all can test to it because you can literally go look at when I first dropped that Jalen Green video that said, how your teammates can limit your potential. That don't sound like hating to me. 
that don't sound like no hate to me. I said his teammates limit his potential. Teammates. I ain't say Jaylen, why Jalen Green is ass, how to play shitty basketball. I ain't say that. I said how your teammates can limit your potential. And I knew what he was capable of doing, s- presented the adjustments, and I don't know if it got into the ears of the players that was there, but all I can know is that we is here where we are now, and we saw what transpired in the past month and a half of basketball. So, all I got to say, all I got to say when it comes down to that, and I was Steph. This is absolutely insane, right? <laughs> Understand, right? Steph began away with so much shit. Watch his feet, right? Notice. He catches left, right. You could already debate if that's a travel, but it's not, right? Just no, understand that, right? Left, right. That's a pivot, right? Left foot pivot. God damn. Come on, man. You got to get the FBI for this one. Come on, man. Come on, man. We need the federal, federal basketball investigation, bro. Right here. Come on, man. That's disgusting work. That's disgusting work. And he got the bucket. <laughs> that's that's disgusting work, bro. They began away with so much shit. Is the merch still out? Kinda, sorta. I'm about to take it down. But let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. I ain't gonna lie. I ain't gonna lie. Let's keep it a bean, though. The rest was not even fucking with Clay. Because he was 0 for 10, but this was a part of it. Where he drove, and that was nothing but contact, and it didn't get called. But they were calling him on either sides. So now notice this right here, right? Keon Ellis, right? As a defender, a lot of y'all get in a situation where you get beat right there. And now you give up and you don't know how to play positioning. But notice what Keon Ellis does, right? Steph stops and now boom, he has to get to his stop. And now he ends up going forward and understands that, oh, I'm tied to his body. That ball is still in the area where I can reach. Poke around right around the backside. Smart defensive play. Even though he got beat, he was still trying to seek ways to be able to make plays as a defender who was essentially at the disadvantage. So, boom, he ends up getting down here. And like I said, they were calling it fair both sides because they ain't call that a foul either. So, yeah. Still 0 for 10, though. Still 0 for 10. Uh, Where the Lakers game? We ain't doing the Lakers game today. We ain't doing the Lakers game today. We ain't doing the Lakers game today. They're making it to the playoffs. B.I. got hurt and shit. We got to watch this. I had to watch this. I had to see what transpired with the Golden State Warriors because this might be the last time we see this big three. But like I said with Steph, bro, it should just be big me. Try to, t- I try, to, I try to, like I said, bro. But notice this with Clay. I'm gonna tell y'all why Clay shouldn't be picking, ro- playing in the pick and rolls. Understand? So when you decide to get Clay Thompson in pick and roll situations, this is not the best part for his game nor for him to build his rhythm. Because now, once you get here, understand what you have to read. You have to understand they're switching this how to lead this into the screen. You have to understand how Sabonis is now going to end up guarding this once I get to this other side. And then once you have that, you got to understand what they're doing on the weak side when it comes down to this defense over here and, Clay, and Steph may be rolling. So what may end up occurring is now that once even Clay gets here, it's like he ain't getting no opportunities. He's just got to end up passing it up. And if you want him to be able to score and be able to break that donut, break the ice, that's not the way to go. Not the way to go. CJ got to drop 60. CJ, I don't, I don't know CJ moving like that nowadays. I don't know CJ moving like that nowadays. I ain't going to lie. Uh, my Golden State are the best team in, uh, in the West, no cap. Hey, by the way, whatchamacallit, McLean, you saved up your money to get the merch. You may as well use that same money to go, and get, go ahead and get the Patreon because I'm dropping three videos a week, a breakdown, an on-court workout, and a weight room workout, and maybe some extra videos throughout the course of the week. So you may as well pay, use that $13 a month, get the PG tier get the food for thought, get actual things that can help you grow and improve and as a player, and that's going to be sustained over a long period of time. So, you may as well go ahead and do that. And I might still low-key be giving away a few pairs that I still got left, so I'll see. I'll see. Uh, Curry speaking about Clay. You just joined the Patreon? Good shit. Seems like you chose discipline. Seems like somebody chose discipline. But let's get back to this. Let's get back to this. Now, when Kaminga's about to go and drive, notice how many eyes he's going to get on him, right? Off a spin move. Boom, two, 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 two. Everybody's turned away. All by all by Kaminga driving again to the paint. And now Clay is even open. If you wanted to pass to Clay, but you know Clay been bricks. That's why he ended up with a donut. Kicks that to Draymond in the corner. Now Draymond's able to knock that down. You get Kaminga driving to the rim. You saw all the gravity he had? 
But that he came off the bench and played 27 minutes. Should have played 40. Should have had him play 40. Now, I got to talk about this gravity. I just got to talk about this gravity, right? <laughs> I'm going to continue mentioning gravity with Kaminga, especially when playing with Curry, because by having him on the floor, your offense is just 10 times better. 10 times better. Because now notice what happens when you can put Steph and Clay, or Steph and uh, Kaminga in a pick and roll, right? With Kaminga as a screener. Notice what Sabonis now has to do. Point to that weak side because how much of a threat Kaminga is on his role. And so notice Sabonis' pickup point now, right? His pickup point is now right in front of that three and he's not hard hedging. He's not even blitzing that at all, right? Because Steph and Kaminga in that pick and roll and Kaminga's gravity when he gets down to the rim. And so this gives Steph room to now what? Eat up that gap and be able to turn the corner because Sabonis wasn't so disciplined again, the ball out of his hands. And now Steph ends up going there and getting fouled against the free throw line all that gravity they have in this action let's only be able to maybe use for 27 minutes and probably only use about five times between these two players wow uh he said curry didn't do anything wrong curry curry did all he could he curry did all he all he could uh, Curry, uh, you said Warriors put up all, all their effort when they dropped the 26 threes on the Lakers. All that to be able to get that spot and then end up playing the Kings and getting dropped off. Tough work. But let's get back to this, though. Let's talk about Steph. Look, notice the way Steph creates. Oh, let me turn this down. Let me turn this down. This shit got loud as fuck for a second. Let me turn that down. Notice, I'm going to talk about Steph's space creation. Uh, how much a month weight room workout? $13 a month. $13 a month. By the way, uh, Deontay. But notice, notice this, right? The way Steph creates space off the ball is by doing this. Notice, right? He sets a screen, right? All that space. Notice. Because by setting the screen for Wiggins, what is what Keon Ellis is now going to leave space for Fox to get underneath that screen. And now that's where all his space is created to now get off this handoff, have all this room, and have a defender who's just out of pace and he gets that bucket. Y'all got to set screens. Y'all got to invest into the offense and stay patient, and then you'll be able to find these gaps and opportunities. He ain't even need to do nothing physical. He ain't even need to touch nobody. Hold on. Let's talk about Moses Moody right quick. Let's talk about Moses Moody right quick. Trade Curry. The only way Curry gets traded if he asks to get traded. Only way. But peep this as well. Notice, right? Now, the thing with Moses Moody as well, right? He gets into the game. Offensive rebound. Three from that right wing, and boom. Just like that, he's already put up more points than Klay Thompson. You got to play these young guys, bro. I don't know what Kurt thinking not playing these young dudes who who's ready to go and hoop, who got fresh legs. It's clear as day that some of the older players you got, even though you think they're going to make less mistakes, how many good things are they going to do to be able to boost the team forward and actually be able to make good plays and be consistent? This has got to face the truth. You got to be out, out, out with the old, in with the new. Got it. It's as simple as that, bro. Out with the old, in with the new. And then you got caught him. Kevin, Kevin Looney. All them damn surgeries he done had. Falling on the floor and shit. Tripping over his own feet, bro. Like. <laughs> Yo, bro. I ain't gonna lie. This shit is tough, bro. <laughs> hey, bro. I'm sorry, but these Warriors might be a little too old, bro. Looney, boom, late. He break that. Fell on the floor. Notice, right? Looney been through a lot of wars, bro. He's been through a lot of wars, a lot of battles on the court. Gets right back up. Tries to get back on defense. Trips on his own feet. Falls once again. God damn, bro. Been through a lot, man. Been through a lot, dog. Been through a lot. So in this situation, let me talk about Pazinski right quick. Let me talk about Pazinski. Uh, Send Curry to the Bucks with <laughs> Wild as fuck. Wild, that is not happening. Watch Curry go to the Lakers. Dog, imagine, imagine you go to the, go to the goddamn Lakers or some shit, bro. That should be insane. That should be absolutely berserk. But let's lock in. Let's talk about this right quick. Let's talk about this. So now, when Kaminga is on the floor, as any player, you got to understand the gravity that he's gonna have on the rim, and most times he's gonna cut. So with Pazinski initiating that with Draymond, ends up getting this pass down here. He don't gotta lay. There's a two on one on this side. And Kaminga's going to cut every single time. And so when Pazinski gets this, all it takes is a look to see both this corner and the wing to see that you got this slot cut. 
all it takes, right? But despite not getting that cut right there and getting that too, Kaminga's still going to do what he's going to do, which is now when he ends up getting a pass when, from this lift up here, I'm not going to play into the defense's games. I'm able to recognize Sabonis taking out this lane from my right side, and now I take it back left. And despite the fact that Steve Kerr hanging on me, I know on this team I'm the second best. This is crazy, dog. I don't know why Steve Kerr not letting them rock. I don't know why he's not letting them rock, bro. I got to keep saying it, bro. Got to keep saying it. Got to keep saying it. Got to keep saying it. Still hold him accountable. Still hold him accountable. Let's let's go to this play. LeBron or Golden State, Kerr. <laughs> that's not going to happen. They're going to be on the same team. Uh, what do I think about Pazinski and the ceiling? He should definitely be getting burned. Him, Moody, should be getting burned. With Kaminga, should be getting burned. Prioritized over the older dudes. And you should have did that in the regular season, so now they're ready for the postseason. And don't think, oh, let's give them a little time right now so then when the playoffs come around, we could get our... That's a, that's a dumb mindset. I just realized what he did. right? I just realized like the thought process. Like You got to understand, Steve Kerr's thought process throughout the entire season was, let's use these young guys so, so we can get some regular season wins. And by the time we get around to these playoffs, now let's rely on Steph and Draymond and Clay once again to be our big three that won the championship back in 2022. Let's do that, right? Just I just need y'all to push us here to the playoffs and they're going to take care of the rest. Little did you even realize they can't take care of the rest. Not all of them. Steph could do his part. Clay can't do his part to the same level. Draymond can't really do uh, Draymond is solid. But especially Wiggins. Fuck no. Wiggins fell off. Wiggins fell off, man. I don't know what's going on, but Wiggins fell off. And so now you, he had to get himself to the point where you got to realize they just cannot do it. They cannot do everything. We need to go out. We need out with the old, in with the new. He should have been realized that, but now it's just too late. Now it's just too late. And being 28 is wild as fuck to me. Bro, I think he's had like an like a absurd amount of surgeries. He's had an absurd amount of surgeries. I forgot the number. I heard it before, but yeah. But notice this as well. Notice this. Notice this, right? So notice. Now, this shot from Kaminga is a bad shot because there's one skill required if you want to be able to knock down this shot at a consistent clip that non-shooters just don't have, regardless of the fact if you could hit threes when you're balanced, right? You got to understand. This one skill that you need is the ability to get dilated, to get focused on the rim. Because at this point in time, he's looking away. He's reading the floor and has to look up quickly to get up into that shot. Non-shooters, typically in scenarios, they must be set shooters. Meaning they have to line up, see the rim for a second, then take that shot. Or have that rim already be in their line of sight and then go into that shot. But when you have to do something like this, when you're looking towards that right side, you're looking down, you're seeing what you have. And then got to get back, get your body balanced and get your eyes on the rim. And then be able to get the ball there. Those, those shots are usually not going to be the greatest of shots. And that's a skill you got to learn. And it's a skill that I literally have a workout on, on the Patreon. So make sure y'all go ahead and hit the top of the chat and go and join. Or go to that description and join. Y'all really got to lock in. Your ability to get dilated and focused on the rim, got to work out for that. And now here, get into a late game. I think JK free agent, I ain't going to lie. I may really consider not, not signing an extension with these motherfuckers. I may really consider signing, not signing extension with Golden State. If Steve Kerr's still there, bro, I might really consider it, bro, because it's insane. Uh, JP, JP Wiggins, Steph, GP2 in 2022. Uh, when is Wiggins' contract year? Bay's going to be ball out th that season. I, I ain't going to lie. I don't think he's going to ball out contract year, bro. It's just, it's just, I don't think so. I don't think so. Plays against the Lakers. It's sad. Bro, he's just always injured, bro. He's just always injured. Like I was just like, bro, how is he injured again? I seen him one time get injured off a off a play after the ball, where the, the where the whistle was blown, and then he tried to go and get a rebound and it fell on somebody's ankle and he got hurt. He was out like three weeks. That's just sad, bro. Shit like that is like, come on, bro, you gotta lock in. Like he just gotta lock in. Choose court Kurt or me? Exactly, exactly. And now when the game got to this point right here, you know this shit was just getting tough. When well, you got Draymond guarding Harrison Barnes. And he taking fades with his body angled like this over the top and knocking him down. That probably threw Draymond in a absolute like daze mentally. To where now you get down to the next few plays down, where now you got an opportunity to get a rebound. Maybe let's start a run and get back into the game. And notice what Draymond Green does. Tries to save the ball and steps out of bounds. They all ratted that nigga out. 
<laughs> they all pointed down to that shit. Not gonna let that shit slide. And out here. Notice this here with Clay. I wanna talk about, I just wanna talk about these next couple of shots with Clay, right? So as a shooter, the only way you can understand if shit is off with your shot is how you're missing your shots, especially if they're left or right. So watch Clay right in these next couple of shots. Transition, boom, he gets this up. Notice where the ball goes. Left rim, left back rim from the wing. That's an ugly miss, ugly miss. That just shows the mechanics and everything going on is off. And so that may be something that's clotted in terms of mentally, you're not thinking about the makes and you're thinking about a miss or your mind is just all over the place. And now notice this next one that ends up occurring, right? That last one made that 0 for 9, I believe, right? You get the ball moving here, got the from top inside out to clay. Where does this shot now gonna end up missing? Watch, ends up missing right side of the rim. Right rim, ball going left, ball going right, ball going long, ball going short. Ain't no consistencies in the shot. So it also shows there's no consistencies mentally. And now this shit right here, I was like, yo, what is going on? I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> you know, as a byproduct of not even having Kaminga in the game for 40 minutes, as he should, like he's ready to do with fresh legs, down 16, six minutes left. And now you just gotta try a bunch of bullshit, right? You double teaming De'Aaron Fox while you're down 16, six minutes left at the half court line. And now you're just automatically putting yourself at a disadvantage, automatically, like this. And now it's like, what do you think they're gonna end up getting? Literally, what do you think? Open corner three, knock it down, you're down 19. Stupid shit. And now this too. Let's talk about this. I'm sorry. I got to talk about the personnel. King Murray outplayed Curry and uh, Big 2024. I mean, he did, but you got to look at what, what Steph is working with, bro. Steph was doing all he could, bro. He ain't had much on his side. So look. <laughs> now... Look at the personnel on the floor right now, right? You got Steph with the ball, Jackson Davis. You got Kaminga, Draymond, Clay. Now, those are three non-shooters on the floor. Jackson Davis, Draymond, Kaminga. So now Steph is automatically going to get blitzed, right? And now you got Clay who's already been bricking. So it's going to make this blitz even tougher. So now when Steph even just has the ball and tries to keep it for himself, he just got no room to do anything because nobody's really a threat. But if you put Kaminga in this action, instead of having him camp corner, probably wouldn't have not got out of bounds probably not been a turnover but you just got to get him engaged you got to embrace him as a player and what he is able to bring and they just don't notice this here i want to talk but this was a good play this one this is a good play one thing i, I noticed this season is that curry is playing a lot more on ball and not running off ball as much because he got to who else going to dribble the ball on that team Keep it a bean. Who else is going to dribble the ball? They don't got Jordan Poole no more. Chris Paul, you know what I'm saying? Like, he, he has a certain style and the cadence to his play. So, like, it's it's tough. It's tough. But notice this as well. This was a good play by, by Draymond, though, right? This is elite, right? <laughs> this was elite by Draymond, right? So, look at Draymond, right? Notice. You know he's about to go and screen for Steph. But who is he going to screen is the question. And now, if Keon Ellis point switching to De'Aaron Fox, who's able to see that, now Draymond knows I'm not going to go down and try to find Keon Ellis. I'm going to stand in De'Aaron Fox's way because he's the one that's guarding Steph now. And Keon Ellis is dropped trying to guard me. So now Steph gets a clean three from the top of the key. But he breaks it though. It's all good because Steph did everything he could. You know what I'm saying? Hopefully Steve Kerr could have did some good himself. But he still got Kaminga locked up like he came from the hood. That shit tough, bro. It's tough work. Got him locked up. He, he, he in the cage with this shit, bro. Now, Kaminga, let's talk about how Kaminga get better. CP3 needed to take over. You know where CP3 could have taken over? You know where he could have taken over? In certain actions I've seen later in the game. And it's crazy that they'd even recognize the fact that they really had a, a little gold mine of an opportunity of a play. So, notice this with Kaminga. I want to talk about this. So, understand, right? With Kaminga, hold on, let me get some water. Let me get some water. Now, this happens to a lot of players. Hold on. Let me peep this right quick because we got a few more clips. They ain't shooting threes. They can't play with me. <laughs> Except for Draymond. Except for Draymond. Draymond had a career year from three, though. He had a career career year from three. So, 
Notice this. Notice this with Kaminga, any any player in general. Anytime as a player you decide to do this, what Kaminga's about to do, you're easy to guard, right? He's got Sabonis. All the type of moves, everything he's doing is going all in one line in one direction, right? And so that first time, all Sabonis had to do was move back. The second time, notice what Sabonis has to do. He only has to move back. You're only making him guard defense in one plane. Whereas if you got yourself in this situation and decide to say, let me show him some moves that's going to lead him to the right and to the left. Let me show him some little crossovers, some little in and out, some little twitch tweens or some shit. Now you can open up a lane to be able to now get to your left side where Fox is now no longer in help instead of having to settle for a jumper. So the moves that lead you to the gaps right and left are vital. And if you only move in one plane and one line, defense is going to be super easy. And out here too. Let's just talk about Kaminga. Just literally putting Kaminga in action. Notice. Simply just by putting Kaminga in action, it's going to make the team tougher to guard. Notice. He screens for Steph. Steph gets out, gets the flare. Sabona so stays attached. Right? Curry curls. Now, boom. He sets the screen for Clay, who's now going towards the ball. And notice what Sabonis now does. He steps out, leaves the lane. Boom. Drop off to Kaminga right there. He gets fouled. Gravity. You don't got nobody else on the team who could be able to make that slip out and actually score at the rim consistently. Kaminga, he does that. Now getting back to this. Getting back to this. That's why I want JK to train with uh, Paul George. Eh, Paul George, eh, I don't know if that's the right one. I don't know if that's the right person quite, but it's, it, it's not as much as you think. Meaning like the ability to just use moves going right to left. Because the way as to which he may even get into some shots at times may not even be his forte. But maybe from the handle perspective, it could work. Maybe from the handle perspective. Then you uh, roll a lot, lot, lot more pick and roll. Hold on, hold on. Hey, hold on, Keith. Hold on. You was on the horn with it. We was, we was, already, we was already on the same track. You just about to see what I'm about to put up right here, right? Notice. Now, with not having Kaminga being on the floor engaged in actions, it's not until four minutes left that you realize that you could have had a lot of gravity, a lot of opportunities with this right here. Chris Paul ball handler coming on the screen because he's not going to get blitzed and you got Chris Paul going against the drop coverage with Sabonis. Could have had a lot of scoring opportunities, but it's too little too late, right? And now even with Kaminga, you space the floor the right way like you'll see the next time, notice what's going to happen, right? When you just simply make these adjustments down the stretch later in the game, right? Now you're down 24. <laughs> Like I said, too little, too late. But you're only realizing this shit with the last four minutes of the game where things have already transpired. Kamiga sets the screen. He slips out. Sabonis so on a drop. You got nobody on that side to tag. So now Kamiga can just steamroll down the lane. He ends up getting fouled. Gravity crazy. But you don't even realize that to the end of the game. And now for the Golden State Warriors going forward, if I'm Kamiga, I'm saying Steve Kerr and me because obviously you still don't trust me. And now just notice how this game just ends out, right? You down 13. You just got to try a bunch of bullshit. Now you double teaming. And on this play, you just end up getting burnt by somebody who's been burning you all game after Chris Paul made that tag right there in the lane. Keegan Murray from deep, and that's practically game. So that's the end of this stream, though. We're going to be live again on Friday. We're going to be locked in live again on Friday. We're going to see what game is going on. Let me see what y'all was talking about before I slide out, though. Um, at any time, he looks at the ball. <laughs> That's kind. Of, that's kind of crazy. There ain't a few times we could have a lot more opportunity. That's why game. That's why one game is tough. I mean, you luckily they even have a playing. It's one game, but at least you got a playing opportunity to be able to play into the playoffs. You know what I'm saying? So at least you got that opportunity. You just got a contract, I think. Oh, shit. They need to tell us, hey, bro. The fact that also I want to say this. I want to say this. The fact that none of the coaching staff checked them for that bullshit is crazy. Nobody checked him. Nobody said, yo, what are you doing? Put Kaminga in. Start Kaminga, click him on. Like, out with the old, in with the new. Nobody checked him for that shit. Nobody. And now I may say, fuck, get rid of the whole staff, man. That's kind of crazy. Nigga, out with the old, in with the new. Trey Clay, Chris Paul, tank for a year and get a first pick and they good. Curry, yeah, Ste I don't know. Steph is not going to tank. Steph does not want to tank. He want to win. He not winning. It's a waste of time for him. He got to get him going. Uh, just, I ain't going to lie. You got to make a lot of decisions. Steph may be out of there. I ain't gonna lie. 
because you just don't really got the pieces for a lot of shit. And if you're going to try to compete and move a, your best pieces in Kaminga and Moody, that's your future. You know what I'm saying? They're trying to play gray zone, but they can't do that. So, Pazisky, uh with three string last second, needed him nine minutes. Exactly. That's kind of crazy. And like I said, though, we're going to be live again on Friday. I got to slide out. Make sure you go join the Patreon top of the chat. Make sure that y'all also subscribe. Make sure you got your noties on. Make sure you join the live. Once again, we live Monday, Wednesday, Friday, 4 p.m. EST. Every, practically every single week except for every few weeks. But make sure you sacrifice your present self and invest into your future self and do everything you need to do to be able to get to where you're here to be. So discipline or regret. You choose.